Good morning from Moores, New York, the place to be on this Tuesday, the 30th right, of March. Uh, what's going on here? Bob Venn and we're at Dragoon's uh, Farm Equipment and Cub, Cub Tractor Sales. That, Cub that sound right? Cub Cadet. Good Cub Lord. Cadet. And, wh and what is this man's name? My name is Gary Dragoon. Gary Dragoon. It says Cub Cadet. Does that mean you have something to do with the Cubs or did you buy one? No, I take care of all the sales on the lawn and garden stuff. You are, yes. We Other years we uh, waited till the afternoon and it's hard to find you, so we're getting you real early this morning. Right. Well, what's new on this 40th anniversary of Dragoon's uh, farm equipment? Well, we got uh, a lot of new companies we're dealing with this year and we have them set up in our uh, new shop. Uh, we're serving pancakes and sausage in the, the old shop and as you can see through here is all our lawn and garden stuff on display and like I say we have all our new equipment in the other part on display. Now Gary, we're familiar with we're the tractor, riding lawn mower, but we're seeing things now that I uh, you don't usually see when we're talking, at least when I am, and talking right. about lawn stuff. And there's a, is that a grubber or something? No, that's, that's a tiller. That's a tiller? A walk pine tiller. For your garden and so forth. And here? That's a chipper shredder. Of course, now with the environment, the way it's getting, uh, you take your leaf, you know, you can't burn anymore and stuff. Uh -huh. So now you shred your leaves and your sticks and stuff and uh, make mulch for your garden. And now they have the grass catchers on them and stuff. Right. Now, is this part of the, uh, the, cup, the cup, cup line? It is, right? Yeah. That's you're all talking? we sell is cup cadet. Okay. Now, uh, this has its own motor? Yep. Its own is this going to be a big thing today? Oh, yeah. You'll, that's like mulching mowers uh, is getting big now because, like I say, the, you can't burn your grass and stuff now. So with this mulching, it puts all the fertilizer back into your, into your lawn. Uh-huh. So you can put sticks through here. Okay. And run it through here, and then all your clippings come out here. Take your leaves. You can leaves and small sticks can go through here also. Then you fold this down, and you can rake your leaves right into it. Then it just puts it all in and the it, mulch. So it pulls it all, and then the cutter is in here. It's a revolving uh, uh, wheel with blades. Yeah, right. Nice right. thing. Uh, you can probably see the circle right here. Yeah. Uh, you can certainly see it on that bigger one right there. I see the there's, there's knives in there. Something like the old corn harvester. Right. The old corn. Some you know. people take bags, uh, put everything into the bags, and then they have whoever their garbage man is, whatever, and bring it right to the dump. Well, Gary, who is your potential? For something like this, not the average homeowner. Oh, well, it's getting to be that way. Are you serious? Oh yeah. It's you know, I think of a guy way. with a hundred by a hundred lawn. He's riding a tractor. You know. No. Uh, well, like I say, with your uh, with your grass now, if yeah. it's too long and you got to uh, rake it all up, you can't burn it anymore. So, what do you do with it? So you mulch yeah. it now or bag it and let the, the garbage man take it away. Okay. What else do you have in lawn stuff that's new? Uh, yeah. you, of course, trailers, right? That's trailers. You know, that's a grass catcher. The catcher in the back, and it puts the whole thing right there. Now all these decks here, you put the mulching kits right on there so that there's no, it doesn't leave any clip, well, it leaves clippings, but they're so small that you don't even see them anymore. Right. And I suppose you have the sweeper, the lawn sweepers lawn and things sweepers. like that too. Now Gary, we read in the paper where uh, uh, it says uh, Dragoon's farm equipment and so but uh, Gary Dragoon, uh, won an award. Uh, now you said the top 100, and I was told, well, you're a long way from the 100. You were up in that list pretty well. Pretty we well. You were uh, number 70. 70. Uh, great. Great. Out of uh, 1,500 dealers in the United States. Very proud. Very yeah. proud. You're responsible for that primarily. Well, you're in charge of that, right? A lot of it, probably. Okay, that's great, Gary. Now they, you took a trip, I heard. Caribbean cruise. So that was uh, seven days. Cup Cadet. All their top 100 dealers went out there. Everything was first class. Uh, now I heard I heard that uh, first prize, a uh, second prize rather, was a trip for you and your wife to the Caribbean. First prize was a, a trip to the Caribbean by yourself. <laughs> now, now, is there any truth to that? No, huh? Don't start in trouble. So, so, the, so the, the whole family went. You and your wife went. Me and my wife. Went. You enjoyed it. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. And your wife's first name? Luann. Yeah, Luann. Was it was a trombley right now? Right. It said in the paper that Dragoon Farm Equipment was recognized. But when I read the paper, uh, I did not recognize. So that's the picture. Because I is it true that when you travel, you do not travel uh, with your... That's the identification I use when I travel. That's, what you, that's the identification tag here, huh? That way I can't be responsible. Glasses, you got rid of your mustache, the whole thing. And you know, when I first saw this, Gary, I said, 
God, there's got to be another scary dragoon because it's sitting right there. Yeah. Somebody yeah, but, made a mistake along the way. Who was it? Do you know who that is? Well, that gentleman right there, they had um, uh, bingo on uh, on the boat. They played bingo every day. And if they didn't win the jackpot uh, each day in a certain amount of numbers, then it, it was a progressive kept going up. And the very last day, that gentleman right there won $3,200. <laughs> well, maybe. Well, no. But so it, this is not a local person. It no, was this one, is another Cub Cadet dealer. Uh, they oh, must have got so our pictures mixed up. They got your up. pictures mixed up. Well, they, I t showed it to someone this morning. They said, well, they thought you had improved. <laughs> Have you heard a lot about this, by the way? Yeah. I'll bet you have. So it's no surprise, but I want you people to know out there that we do what? Read the papers. See? Right. We do it. All right, what is new in the coming year? Anything? Uh... Um, they're thinking about going into uh, developing a new commercial moor, a uh, new walk-behind commercial moor, and also a commercial uh, zero-turn radius moor. But that's in the developing stages right now. Okay. You, as you people who watch Hometown Cable on a regular basis know, this is not our first visit to Dragoon Farm Equipment. One of our big reasons for being here, of course, is the, the importance of farming in the northern tier and the continual changeover in farming. Uh, they've got their problems, and uh, they, there's labor problems, there's uh, money problems with milk, there's a lot of things. So we're here, one of our primary reasons here, of course, is to see the Dragoon family. And to, and to eat, right, yeah, your dad said at his, uh, or one of the parties, that uh, we eat pretty well, yes. And then, of course, also to uh, talk about the farm problem and what's expected, and see some of the farmers who are here on this nice day. They'll still be here because they can't oh, get in their fields, right? No. <laughs> sure no. can't get in their fields. That's how we went early. That's, we yeah. used to go later in, in April, but a lot of guys were in the fields and they couldn't come to this, so we just started to go at the end of March, and hopefully we'll get everybody that way. Mm -hmm. Now, Gary... How many, uh, is this operated as a separate business from the farm equipment as far as personnel? Uh, yeah, well, right. I have one mechanic. One mechanic and yourself? Here. Right. So does he sell also or do you do most no, of the selling? No, I do all the selling. Okay, so if you want to talk to the boss, you're going to talk to him. Right. Don't come and ask for dad. This is the guy right here. Uh, he'll be uh, taking care of your, your needs make sure that, you're, that you're, you're happy after you get it too, after the sale, right? Right. You get a lot of repeat sales? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Got customers for 30 years. Okay. Keep coming back. Right. Repair. What kind of repair and parts do you carry? We carry all the uh, regular maintenance, you know, spark plugs, oil filters, oil. And belts. you can and you got can Everything one man take stuff. care of all the repair work here? Uh, normally, no. And that's getting so big now that usually in the summertime we hire. You do uh, have some other help. Yeah. Okay. Well, Gary, this is kept at this end. Is this the so your parts are at this end? No. They're, they're part, all are part of the, part, yeah. the parts department. Okay. Right. Anything else you want to tell me be, while I'm here? Your grandmother's here again today? Grandmother here. My aunt and uh, today. Aunts and uncles here again? Yeah. Rainy Rabbit do? Rainy Rabbit. What about? Oh, Rainy Rabbit is birthday today, too. I'd oh like God. to say that. Okay, make sure we... we I think we, he's 79. 79? He said 69, but I think it's 70. 79 today. We're glad to know that. And uh, is the... is uh, Jack's birthday today. Jack who? Your dad's birthday, yeah. too? Were they twins? Yeah, they look a lot they alike. They look a lot alike, you know, they do, huh? <laughs> Gary, uh, what about uh, the man from the newspaper? Is he here cooking again? Yeah, Steve. Steve, Steve Manor, Manor he's been here for many, many years, huh? Yeah, Steve Manor. We got uh, Donald LaBarge helping us today. Don uh, from the store? Don from the store. Okay. Uh, Mike Denault's here helping us. Of course, all our uh, work staff, and then my mother and all her sisters. And oh, oh, yes. you got to thank all of them. Family too. day. Yep. Thank you very much, Gary. Anything else? We may get back to you during the day. Anything else you want to mention? Uh, just thank you and Calvin for coming. Okay, and how's Good Robbie weekend. and your and, oh. and your daughter? I forget your daughter's name. Rhonda. Rhonda, is she, she's still, uh, we, she's not playing basketball anymore, huh? No, she's out of school now. She's out of school? Yep. What's she doing? Uh, she's working in Champlain. Good. And Robbie, what's he? He's, he's trying to play any he's ball still at all? Going to school, yeah. He's still, yeah. yeah. He has trouble talking. He was here last year. He was on our on our tractors for us, giving us the whole spiel. Uh, I don't think he has any trouble talking. <laughs> <laughs> it takes after his his grandfather yeah. Ron Trombley. Yeah, that's it. Okay. <laughs> Talk to you later. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. This is where it takes place right here. You can see that uh, they line up in here to get their food. The big pancakes. Look at the size of those pancakes. And the uh, man cooking the sausage here, we'll find out who our meat man is. Look at him in here. This is not the first time. Those are all... Yeah, he's the meat man right here. And who am I talking with? Chris Boris. Chris Boris. 
Christmas is not new. Do you, do you work here for, for Dragoon? Yep. Oh, all right. You're getting paid. You're one of the guys getting paid for this. Yeah, Part of your so. work week, huh? Yeah. How long have you been at Dragoon? Uh, five years now. And what what do you what is your main job at Dragoon? I do do the delivering. Your delivery out. Okay. Yeah. Here's another guy coming for a second. Go right ahead. We don't want to hold anybody up. It's got to be good. They're coming back for more. So. Away they're walking right away after hear some more here you get we're gonna do this very shortly but we figure we before we do we'll uh, wow look at that hey Calvin this is the time they're serving big right now are you, do you have any restrictions at all as to how much can people can eat no nothing at all everything that'll fit on the plate all right well Chris who is your who's your partner on your left that's Steve 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 Bedark want to say hello to us Oh yes, Walter. Hello there, here. Steve. How are you? Good, good. You look happy behind your griddle. Always happy here. Yeah, nice how, many, how many years have you been doing this? Uh, probably 17, 18 years, something like that. Yeah. You look forward to this? Every year. Uh, I'm sure you do. Huh? Compared to regular work, it's relaxing and uh, it's fun. Of the people who come through here, what percentage don't you know, uh, even by, even though you don't know their names? Not very many people you don't know? Not too many. No, no. <laughs> Not too many. You either saw them, you know them personally, or they were here last year? Friends of my parents or my grandparents or Jacks that I met, you know. You've always lived in this area, right? Okay. And if you were a Menard, where would you be from? Four Sports, of course. Okay. Well, Jack, thank, uh, Jack, uh, Steve, uh, of course. Jack, my twin brother, you didn't know that, did you? <laughs> no, I did Actually, we're triplets. Jack, myself, and the guy that you know here. Well, did you know that there's two birthdays today? Did you know that? No, no. Jacks and, and uh, Rabidou's. Yeah, I forgot mine. Rabidou's birthday today. Oh, yeah? Yes. Don't say you got it here, but you did, all right? Of course, Steve Ben Orange, you don't see his face often, but you hear, you, see, you get all his writing on the on the Press Republican. A good job, Steve. We wish we saw more of your articles. I, I gave them uh, I gave them the word down there when I was at Expo. Yeah, yeah, that right. I think you ought to divide this back to the different areas like they used to. There you go. Yeah, the regionalized paper, yeah. They told me it hadn't been that way since 84. Is that right? 84, 85, yeah, around there. Okay, well, if you want to, uh, if you believe in that, you want to see more of Steve's articles and less about Doc Roga in our in the section, write to the Plattsburgh Press and tell them about it. Okay? And well, the big raise will go to Steve. I hope so. <laughs> right. Good morning. Got a lot of smoke in front of us. And who am I talking with or who's going to talk to me? Well, this is Mike Dennell. Hi, Mike. Mike, you haven't got much at your griddle. What's that well, mean? Just getting there, cleaned off. They're ready to cook some pancakes there. Okay, this is your pancake griddle here. You got three, three oh, griddles. Yeah, three of them going, yeah. Three of them going for the pancakes, huh? Get some sausage head for today. Get it, after right. you get so much sausage there, get some pancakes. You get like a big line. So Mike, sure how long have you been doing this? This is my second year. You're only your second? Yeah, yeah you're just breaking in. You talked yeah. to the old man down oh, there. Oh, yeah. 17 I years with Steve. I enjoy it. Yeah, you got it. Is that guy on your right? He's his first year, isn't it? Yeah, that's Tom. So are you breaking him in? You're no longer on the bottom of the pole anymore. You can't trying, the trying. Easy, huh? We're trying to break him in. Yeah. Well, I thought he sold this merchandise before it gets into pancakes. What, what the what the store clerk doing here serving pancakes? We butcher anything. We butcher pancakes. We butcher meat. We butcher, <laughs> you're butchering this stuff too, I hear. Yeah, right. <laughs> Who is this man? Don LaBarge. Don LaBarge, right across from, uh, I shouldn't say the funeral home, but right there on the, on the, on the, the senior housing is what I want to say, right? Then there's a dead across the road. Yeah. <laughs> How long have you been there at the store now? Two years. Two years. How are things going? Good. Thanks to you guys, you do a good job up in this part of the country. Well, thank you. But you say that again in case nobody heard you? Do I get a free advertising? <laughs> I got to listen. Don't encourage them. Don't encourage them. You are the, an advertiser yes, now on yes, Hometown yes. Cable. You can read all about their specials and everything else they got going. Yep, they do a real good job up here with all the kids, all the sports you guys cover is great. And and thank uh, you very much. Is all your family back now? I got No, I got two boys that are still in Texas. They like that hot weather. They're playing golf down there right now. They sure are. They called me Sunday and said, we're swimming in the pool, Dad. Well, I said, just think about me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And so this is your first year? Yeah. yeah. Are you enjoying it so yeah, far? It's too yeah. little early yet. Yeah, we just did this Sunday for the rescue squad over there. We got pretty good practice. So they said, well, we'll bring you over here and give you more practice. Uh -huh. Well, you'll be here for all day? Yep, till 5, 6 o'clock this evening. <laughs> what, what, seven? Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. Oh, you didn't know that, huh? Nine hours. What? <laughs> See, no. they told me it was only for two hours, and then it went to four hours, and then it's to ten hours, you know? 
Okay, well, the smoke, they try to get it up yeah, up the yeah. here, yeah, right? We just invented this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks, Doc. Uh, Thanks, Mike. Yeah, you're welcome. Mike. Okay, this is where it's happening in the back room. This is where they're mixing uh, all the pancake mix. Uh, it goes in the back here. They're, they got the all the uh, the packages of the uh, pancake mix along with the milk and the other ingredients. And of course, sitting right here, this is where you come in and you get your important things like your plate and your utensils. Without that, you couldn't eat, could you? No, not oh, very well. Not very well at all. Okay, who am I talking with? Uh, Jack's aunt. Jack's aunt. Well, she's got to have a name. <laughs> I help on the right. All right. And you've been doing this for a number of years, helping out every year? Yes. It's a chance for the family to get together. Right. Okay, so did you get here uh, early this morning? Not very early. Not very early, no. So uh, you be here most of the day? Yes. Can you, can you last out this whole day? It's a long day. Oh, yeah. Okay. Get a chance to see the old friends here that come in? I, yes. I don't mean by age, I mean but people you've seen for years. That's right. Okay. You get a chance to sit down at all during the day? I hope so. It's, a, it's tough standing up here. All right, and uh, these are some of the tables uh, here. This is generally what? A repair over this side? What do they do with this building usually at this end? Do you know? Yeah, this is repair. Repair usually. They cleaned it all up and been spending the time. The doors are open. Look. And it, uh, it's the 30th of March. Well, Calvin and I just finished eating. Did you just finish eating too? No, I'm going. You're going to get some, all right. Yeah. Robotoy Incorporated. Uh, what is your name, sir? Bob Dumas. Bob Dumas, are you? What's this, uh, Robotoy? Robotoy is a meat company out of Canada. Uh, are you a farmer? Yeah, I'm a dairy farmer. Where? In Morris, sir. Okay, now, uh, Calvin mentioned uh, uh, Farm Bureau. You were, are you in the Farm Bureau? I'm a Farm Bureau member, yes. Okay, so this is not your first time at Dragoon's oh, no. uh, anniversary? Oh no, I've been coming to it for a long time. You look forward to this? Really Way of getting some of your money back from Jack? A little Jack? bit, <laughs> a little bit. It's hard to get the most, the best of Jack, you know. Well, I'll tell you, <clears throat> this is a great thing. It, it's a happening in Moore's every year. Sure we is. just saw Harold Jubert, we saw him here last year, and now uh, he's here again. I've seen him over the years, you know. And, right. uh, this is We've been here for several times. Right. Uh, where is your farm, Mr. Dumas? Just two miles north of Moores, on the North Star Road. On the North Star Road. Yeah. All right. I'm not familiar. I don't know if I know where your farm is. I worked with Dr. Dwight many years ago. <coughs> he used to oh, travel. Wow. He's been up to my farm. He has been, huh? Okay. So what's the story on farming now compared to last year? Well, I think the price is going to be a little less. I think everybody will have to be a little bit careful. Hopefully we're trying to get a compact started in New York State. But it's a what? A compact, dairy compact. What does that mean? Well, it's a long story, but it would try to unify the farmers and hopefully get a little better price for milk. It's not going to go on strike or anything no, like no. that? Oh, no. It's nothing, nothing to do with that. Just an organize, to organize some way, right? Right. Now, how many cows, how big is your farm? We milk 60 cows. Okay, you said we. That means there's more people. Well, I, I have two boys with me and hired man. Uh-huh. Uh, last year's Holsteins? Oh, Holstein. Are there more whole seeds in this area than that area? It seems to me that there is. Oh yeah, the biggest percent of probably well, over 90 percent. Okay, my my stepfather was a cast iron and I've been brought up on the farm and all, most of the cast irons had, uh, you know, the whole seeds. But right. we, we found them more docile, easier to handle, everything else, you know, they, they gave more. Whether you got a thousand dollar camera or a ten thousand dollar camera, the batteries go, uh, Bob, and they, they just went. Uh, we were talking about the asteroids and the whole scenes. I guess we said all we got to say about them. Uh, what do you think is going to happen to your crops this coming year? Is this uh, lack of snow early, a lot of snow late? That, what's going to happen? I hope it wasn't too serious with the lack of snow early on. We would have liked seeing it earlier. Uh, as far as a large amount of snow, I don't think it's going to hurt us. No, it may, may help. Do you usually spread your your manure and fertilizer all year long? No, mine's in a manure pit. Oh, good. pit. oh, in a pit. I was going to say, because in March you wouldn't have done too much if you it. wanted to. Huh? No. Not really. So you have a pit? Yeah. And uh, then how do you spread it? By uh, liquid later? Liquids, yeah. We agitate it and spread it. You do that in the spring Twice before? A year. Twice yeah. a year? Yeah. Is there enough room for all of your winter? Well, it's going to be full, especially with all this snow. 
<laughs> right. Now, when you say, how long will you be doing that in the spring? How long a job is that going to be for you? Well, it'll take a uh, better part of a week, probably. Three, well, that's all? Two or three days. And real long days, you could probably do it. Is that one of your more desirable jobs? Oh, yeah. Well, you, you know, know that's just going to bring the crop real good, right? Correct? Right. It's, uh, depending how far you have to draw it. You know. Okay. All right, anything else that you want to tell me about the condition of farming in our area uh, this year over last or two years ago? No, i just like to see the farmers get united a little better. I don't know what the answer is for that. Is there any other industry that you know that is getting less now for their products than they were 15 years ago? No. Or 15 years ago you were getting more than this, right? Oh yeah, definitely. And your, your cost of materials and things are probably not double, but 50, 60 percent increase? At least double, I would say. Now, prob I'm not asking you, so you don't have to say yes or no, but I probably your farm is paid at this time in your life. But if it weren't, and you had to make payments, it'd be kind of tough, wouldn't it'd be it? be real tough. It'd be very, very tough for a young family to come in? Very start. Almost impossible. That's why the number of farmers percent keeps dropping every year. And it's going to continue, I'm afraid. You know? Okay. And that's not real good for the consumer, either. You know? So you've been farming all your life? Yeah. You go to school here? Yes, I did. I'm not going to ask you how old you are. I wonder if I went to. I, went, I know some Dumas. Were you related to Gertrude and. Uh, Cousins. Yeah. Cousins, all right. We do something to Dumas. All right, we've been talking with Bob Dumas and from Moore, the farmer, and he's all smiles. He's also very anxious to go and get some of Jack Dragoon's uh, sausage and pancakes. Yes. Enjoy it very much. They're very good. Okay, thank, thank you, you very much. Right, okay. That's or else don't chew. <laughs> But we saw some people down here getting ready to enjoy their meal and we're all finished and we don't care if they do or not. We That's already? the way I feel. We ate already? We ate already, yeah, we had ours. Okay, yeah. on my right, we're gonna go by age here. We're talk we're gonna talk to Carlton Castine. What you're like <laughs> Carlton Castine. as you probably know, this is Calvin's dad. Hello, Carl. Good morning. This is not your first time here? Today, huh? Oh, <laughs> you can come twice. Coming back yeah, it's here till seven. <laughs> Jack, did you hear that? <laughs> Over the years, you bought some stuff here at uh, Dragoons, a lot of stuff. But, but you know, a cast iron can eat up the profits awfully quick. I've seen them. <laughs> right, you are. <laughs> but when you were working for the uh, the town, and you were uh, road commissioner, right? Road commission, that's right. Yeah. Road Superman. super. Uh, did did you, any equipment they had here you could use on the? Uh, on the roads? Well, we, we used to get part for our morning feed here. Or, no, we've, I've got part here. Okay. No. All right, well, now, you've got, you've got company here, too. Uh, you got the whole road here in half of Rouse's Point. <coughs> <coughs> Who's this man over here? Henry Gooley. All right, well, sorry. Henry Gooley. Henry, you uh, you haven't dared take a bite yet, have no. you? Because you don't know if you're going to be on TV while you're chewing. <laughs> <laughs> well, Henry, you came alone? These guys. Oh, okay. Eddie and Carl. We came together. You, you import, we enforce each other here? What? Uh, he helps me on sale day, so. What sale day? Tuesday at the commission sales in Cheesy. They so changed it from cat. Thursday to Tuesday? Oh, yeah, How long ago? Quite a while. I didn't know that. All right. Well, don't, uh, I should, I hate to refrain you from eating. It's going to get cool. Because Carl's wore right at it. He said, I'm not stopping. He's not stopping for anything, he said. You usually come every year here? Oh, yeah. It's an outing, right? An outing, you see a lot of people? A friend of mine, Jack Bold, and my team on Friday night, is sponsor oh. us. So oh, I've seen a lot of trophies up there. Is that all your winnings uh, over the years? Quite a few, Jack. Mike, that is a lot of Jack trophies out there. Bowler. I wish I were back in business again. You could get a life uh, business right here. <laughs> all right. Uh, and what's happening over here? Our third person is who? This is Eddie. Eddie Bunt Mayo. <laughs> <laughs> supervisor's brother, you ought to know. The supervisor's brother. Yeah. Oh, our supervisor, yes, of course. All right. What do you think our job, our supervisor's doing for a job? Doing a good job in Champlain? Ask the public. <laughs> He's working very hard. He's trying to, I guess. A lot of hours. A lot yeah. of hours. He spends a lot of hours, doesn't he? I'm doing all right. He's doing very well. He's yes, doing all right. very, very well. Okay. Well, I can see that they'd rather be eating than talking with Calvin and I here, but so, uh, are you sure you don't want to stop a few minutes and talk with us, Carl, instead of eating? No, I'll keep doing both. 
<laughs> they might run out over there. <laughs> well, when it's free, you put a dollar up when it's free. Well, you, well yeah, we, I, Jack is paying me to try to keep you down. If you eat slow, you don't eat as much, he said. You don't go back for seconds. It's been proven. Yeah. Huh. I didn't know that. Well, you know, we just saw Harold Jubert down here. He's uh, recovering from, you know, he, after he left here, he had that stroke last year. After he left here, looking very, very good. And uh, it's good to see him again. And a lot of, look at all the faces we see here. A lot of uh, familiar faces. All right, what do you want to tell me that uh, you, you think I have to know? I don't know. I think I know everything you like. <laughs> you know all right. All right, well, enjoy your, your pancakes and your sausage, and uh, don't eat too much of that sausage. That's fattening for you. Is it? Bad for your heart. I don't want to eat lot, but I want to get fat. You don't want to get fat? I do. You do? Oh, yeah, well, I wanted to, and I did. I succeeded. <laughs> We're at uh, Dragoon's Farm Equipment for the 40th anniversary of this business here in Moores, New York, which takes a lot of space here on the south side of Route 11 as you head west. And they're well known, they're a large family here, it's been here for many, many years. And of course, Jack is the supervisor in the town of Moore's. And uh, one of the hard workers, believe that? Yeah. The hard worker. And uh, always a smile on his face, and I'm sure people out there appreciate all he does here for us. But this, and not, remember, he's also a fireman of many, many years, the former king of the winter carnival with his wife, Margaret, and many other things. And I'm sitting here, and I'm getting hungry again watching Carl and, and Eddie and uh, Henry eating. But I'm going to take a break. We're running in luck today because we, we had trouble last year to get run down Wayne and Gary. Now we got Wayne here, and it's not even quite noon yet, uh, oh, Wayne. It's early. Okay. Uh, the, the crowd a little later this year, or they're spread out more, I think? Well, uh, yeah, The food's at the other end. Food's at the other end this year, just like it was last year. We got the exhibit. No, we here. last year in the middle, didn't we? Well, yeah, in the middle. But you know, I mean, not way as far not as. Not way it. up. Okay, uh, what has happened here? Did you want to tell me about over the past year? What is uh, new in the uh, Dragoon Farm equipment? Well, we got a few new lines of equipment out, and been cleaning <laughs> the last last full week. I guess we've been doing a lot of cleaning. Okay, you mentioned. All right, let's talk a little bit about that while we're. Here. But you have, you're in, this is your third open house here in this third building. In this so it's building. only been here two years right. of those three. Two oh, full years of use. Two full years. Now, you said you washed down yep. all this aluminum that's all around the building, white. Yeah. Right. Cleaned it all up, sidewalls, the doors. Yeah. And I asked you what kind of a pressure hose you used for that. Yep. And you said? This one right here. That one right there. All like by this. hand. You're up there on ladders. And look at the size of that, of that ceiling. And then the walls, too, right? The walls, doors. Now, what would make it dirty? How can it get dirty? Well, mostly it's mostly diesel smoke. I'm starting the tractors, and running them in here. The smoke's got to go someplace, huh? Many fly specs? You find many like we do in a, on a farm? No. no? Not that you didn't, there's no. nothing here for them to eat. None. <laughs> okay, if they like big things, you could, you could look at here. What in the world is this? It's a rear tractor <laughs> tire. This is a new line of tire starting to sell. The name of it is Galaxy. It was uh, like originally this company, well, BF Goodrich had sold tires, and this company had bought out the molds for the BF Goodrich tires. And this is a new line of tire that I'm starting to sell, which is Galaxy. This one here is a 20.8, 38. It was on uh, like a big tractor tire. Is that about big the tractor. same size as that one? Similar. Similar. It would okay. go on that, that size tractor. <clears throat> and we've got. Yeah, I was going to ask you what, what's a tire. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask you that. How often do you have to replace a tire like? Let you get a cut in it. How well, long will that last normally on the farm? It depends how much road use you use. If you use a lot on the road, you can probably three, four years. Three you, or four years. That's all. If, okay, you, if you get a lot of road use, right? If you course. don't, you can get ten years. Okay, the average farmer don't get an awful lot of road use unless no. you've got different farms. All right, yeah. and all right, let's get a price on this. This one here is around five hundred and ninety-nine dollars. Now, obviously, you with that size tube, you got to put a, tubes in this tire. Yeah. All right. And you, you get it, what's a tube run for that? Around sixty bucks. Sixty dollars for the tube. Now, when you sit, buy one, do you have to buy two? If, if you're worn, because it. Uh, well, if the other side's wore pretty bad, they they recommend putting a pair okay. on. What do you do with a, with a, with a, the one you're taking off? Can you do anything with it? Except make a planter in the front of the yard? Well, they make good planters. Some farmers use them as feeders. 
They cut them in half and use them as feeders. What do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? They just, they just cut. Cut the half there and then fill it up. You put the food out, outside yeah. for the. Yeah. All right. All right. Now, then for this, of course, you go to. Uh, this is for a wagon. No, this here is for uh, for a uni loader. Like, well, we got the uni loaders over on the other side. Uni loaders are skid steers. This is a 10 by 16.5. Uh-huh. That's the that, that's this the is front a tire? This is wagon. A wagon, all right. This is a tire they've just recently come out with. This one's a 10 ply tire. And this one here is called the tri rib. The what? Tri rib. It's three ribs for the front of a tractor. Now, does that help you keep it straight easier? Well, helps that you steer. Helps you steer a little bit. Yeah. All right, here, look, some of the other tires. Uh, these are just a lot of different Do you options. carry a lot of tires on hand? How many tires like this would you have on oh, hand at a these, normal? These here, probably 15. You keep that many? Well, that's not really a lot, but well, it's hard to... Obviously, keep, you have it in the building in the back. You yeah, keep these. Okay, you don't keep them in it's here. It's hard to keep all sizes because all of tractors course. Yes, have all yes, different yes. sizes. And over the top, you can see the batteries. Again, look at the assortment of batteries with the sizes. I mean, you know, there's nothing comes constant, right? No. You can't, uh, there's no easy, uh, everything is different. All right. Uh, and we got some power washers behind Calvin. Uh, now, that, why wouldn't you use that on your wall here? We tried it, but the way the diesel grime was on there, it, it like smeared it. It wouldn't pull it all the way so off. So, are you telling me maybe this isn't as good for oil when, well, it's, when, it's, when it's greasy? If you have a, see, we... Plus, we didn't want to get too much water and oh, of course, around all the area, yeah, yeah. so we couldn't. Yeah, you'd have a pool. What would you use this for on a farm? This on the farm is to keep the equipment clean. Out, okay. You wouldn't use it for interior buildings or anything like that. Well, you can. You can spray your vinyl. Vinyl. You can use it on the outside. It's a thousand pounds. Pressure. A thousand pressure? pounds of pressure. You use it on the equipment, tractors. You use it on your vehicles. Uh huh. You got different models. They got different. Like this one's 1,500 pounds of pressure. Now, I've never seen one of these at a, at a, at a home. Is this a relatively new innovation for yeah, home homes? Farms? For farms? Farms, is, they're starting to get into them more. Because yeah. price that, of equipment gets expensive. And yeah. That will clean your manure spreader off, huh? There, yep. Oh, boy, I'll bet it does. All right. Well, while we're here, uh, you mentioned these have been uh, finally finished, in, finished Finish. installed, you know? Our exhaust system. Your exhaust system. i got three exhaust fans. It pulls the pulls the air out of the ceiling over there. You can see the over in the center where the square boxes are. Oh yes, that's where it pulls the fresh air in. Yeah, and then they go out through here. Uh, you got to remember that even you know all the inventory you have for tires, that's not the end of it. You also have to have the racks, and you have a, a few dollars invested in just racks like that, right? Just the racks. Yeah. You know, that's that's racks. a heavy gauge steel to racks hold those things. Yeah. Rack it, because if you don't go up, you need a lot more room down below. Yep. Correct. All right. Uh, we'll talk with this with the Case International man, maybe. Yeah. Uh, we got a service service rep and a. What about this? Is that a case? No. Nope. Anybody here for, with that? Land Pride. Well, no. don't you come tell us what it is. And then there's another one here. Well, first of all, these are scrapers. This is the back blade. This goes a uh, Category One hitch. Goes on a. 30, 40 horsepower tractor. All right, it would it would go. That's the third, yeah, your two point, and it's your third point here. Okay, and then this would go behind your tractor to scrape. Uh, so what you're, what you're saying is you're you're driving through the dirty part. Right. Uh, certain models. See, this model doesn't have it, but certain models have the cutting edge on the back side where you could push it too. Okay. Now this means you don't want to pick up so much, so you have holes in it. This is a. Well, I call it a rake. Where would that level. be used? Would that to level out. Oh, okay, just a, a level, regular leveling. And the tires go up and down, yeah, depending? to gauge it. Okay. And you got a rotary mower. A rotary mower. Now, is this to cut grass rather than hay? Well, Wait. this can cut grass and hay and but light can, brush. Can you cut grass that's higher than what will fit under there? You can. I mean, it, 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 if, if it folds over, it makes no difference? No, it'll, it'll, it'll cut it. It's All got right. the... Chain guards in the front. Chains on the front. Is this is this is the front. Yeah, this is where your three-point oh, hitch. Went. Oh, all right. Yeah, you're pulling it over the top of what you're going on. Okay. But this will take up. I figure which size. It'll take up a certain size brush. Well, now let us say out of a given hundred farmers, how many farmers out of a hundred would would have something like this on his premises? I mean, ten. 
five to ten. Five to ten. So it's not it's not something that every farm has. No, no. And it, is it, it may not be something every farm needs. Right. Okay. I don't, I'm not trying to cut, cut sales here, but you aren't going to sell to all the farmers. Like a mowing machine, every farmer has to have a mowing machine of one kind or another. Right. Right. Or uh, some kind of a cutter. All right. Uh, anything else you could tell me here the, uh, so that we don't step on one of your dealer's toes where he's going to tell us all these great things? Well, we got Gale. You have Gale last year? No, nope, that's something new we just took on. Okay. We've got a representative. You have a representative here with Gale? Yeah. Now, Gale is well known. I've, I've heard of Gale for many, many years in the area. You know, I mean, I've, I don't know if they've sold them here, but I know I've seen them in the fields. And, is that uh, from mini Minnesota or is that Canadian? You know offhand? Not really no, sure okay. Offhand. All right, what about this big piece right here that we see? That is anybody here with this vehicle? Yep. All H&S right. Because we'll find out what that thing is. That thing is so Forge box. It's a what? Forge box. Boy, that's a real outfit. Now there, that's, that's the price. Probably of a small farm where my father bought one 40 years ago. My father bought his farm in on Stetson Road in Shady for sixty-five hundred dollars. You couldn't buy that for sixty-five hundred, right? You're right. Yeah. Cost more than the farm did. That's what's happening today, too. All right. Well, Wayne, we'll get back to you as you walk around. What is your job with the with uh, Dragoon Farm Equipment? I'm the service manager. Service manager. So this is your domain right out here. Yes, sir. All right. And also with the parts, or is that a spe- special no. person there? Gary is the parts manager. Okay, he's the parts manager. So your this is yours here. So customers have. Problems, they come see me or call me. Are you also into sales? A little bit. Not a lot. Not a lot, but a little bit more each year. Who's the best salesman of this company? Well, Dad will probably Jack. see. Dad's going to see this, you know. I would say probably the birthday boy. <laughs> the birthday boy, yes. You're the second one told us that today. Yeah. We'll have to remember that no, when we see. You want to forget that. So there's two people here with birthdays today. Do you know that? Yeah, there's I think three. Brady Revenue. Yeah. I yeah. Think Francis Menard. Francis Menard's birthday. Well, he came in the last. Yeah, his birthday. Well, someone said that uh, Steve Benar was also one of the triplets, but he's not his birthday, that's all. He's ready with that other two people. <laughs> it must have been a big party years, years ago or something. I'll tell you, that's one thing about a small town. Here you see these people, and even though you may not know them well, they always stop and talk. Oh, yeah. and, you know, it's, 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 I like small towns. Uh, and this is a small town. We're in Moores, New York at the Dragoon Farm Equipment. And this is one of the, not the youngest uh, Dragoon, because there are small children. You have one or two yourself. Two little bit. Yeah, who did I talk to last year? Both of them, Danny and Mark. Danny and Mark. All right. They'll be here after school. Okay, and then they, they got something to look forward to in years to come? Yep. You, you, you in a hurry to see this? Uh, you'll be Dragoon and Sons continually. Well, it'll come soon enough, I guess. <laughs> yes, it will. Thanks very much. Yep, thank Wayne you. Dragoon. It. Right, thanks. What's going on here? <laughs> okay, we heard somebody say you want to talk to the Potato King, and then I... Talked him off camera. He said he's not a potato king, but he raises your name, sir. Clifford Duquette. Clifford Duquette, and you told me you were from the Morrisonville area. West of Morrisonville. West of Morrisonville. All right. Now, what's this? Did somebody pulling your leg when they told me you were a potato king? You raise potatoes? Oh yeah, about 80 acres. Now, do you sell potatoes? Yeah. Who do you sell your potatoes to? The wholesaler. All to one? Well, mostly one of them. Then I sell my. You know, I deliver potatoes myself, restaurants. And stuff. Okay, now, potatoes, I can remember we always had a few on the farm, you know, but that's all automated today. Oh, yeah. You plant them with a machine and you take them out with a machine. Yeah. Uh, how many men help you? How many people do you have help? I have helped? two sons. Are they both working the potatoes? Yeah. Have you always raised potatoes? Yeah, I got a dairy farm too. All right, you, uh, milking cows? Yeah. How many do you have? About 100, 100. You come way up here to get your equipment here. You know Drag Dragoon for a while? Oh, yeah. You also said something about getting some credits while you were here today. What did you mean by that? And you get so many credits you can get your license to spray. Well, I don't really know what you mean there, except I talked to Larry Barkholm earlier, and he said that the, even if you're a, your own farm, you can't spray chemicals until you get a permit or a, a license? You have to get your... To get your uh, spray, you can have a license number. To buy the spray? Yeah. All right. And then if you don't have a, uh, training enough, they, w- they won't give you the license? Well, you have to have a training in the beginning. Oh, no. They just don't want these chemicals out there, right? Eh? Are they that dangerous? Oh, I guess they are. They'll kill you, don't they? Huh. Do you wear a mask when you, when you spray like that? Some. How often do you spray, Mr. Duquette? Well, potatoes have to be sprayed every 10 days. Oh, potato, but every 10 days? Uh, 
Every 10 days till you dig them. I thought you planted them and you reaped the harvest in the fall. You made all that money without, without working. No. It's not like that, huh? <laughs> Is it, does it give you a good supplement to your farm income from your regular dairy farm? Oh, yeah. I was all my father raised potatoes. Well, I'd be asking you if you've raised 80. How come you don't raise 100 acres? Well, with the dairy, it's enough. It's enough. All right. Could you sell more if you if you oh, raise yeah. more? Oh, yeah. Now, my understanding is that potato area here is Cherbusco, on uh, uh, Western Ellenberg, and so forth. Why would that be? Is is it certain kind of land better for potatoes than others? Well, actually, where I am it was good potato ground years ago, but they all quit. Uh, but there's money in potatoes. Cernak potatoes, used to call them. That's where I am in the town of Cernak. Okay. Up in Cernak Lake, they raise potatoes. Well, you know my, you been in the Cernak most of your life. My uncle was Victor Venn. Did you know Victor? No. Yeah. Uh, his, his name was not really Victor, you know. His name was Jedian. Jedian Victor Venn. My father was Derek Venn. He used to be a horse dealer many years ago before your time. Uh, but uh, I, I'm from the Saranac area as far as my family well, is concerned. You're one of those Venns Yeah, I'm one of those. Oh, yes, I am. Well, I just lived about a mile down. From Junior? Yeah. And uh, Addison area, that right in that area? Yeah. Okay, well, thank you for talking to us. That wasn't hard, was it? Oh. Huh? You enjoyed it. Nice meeting you, Mr. Duquette. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, when Jack talks to us and when we talk to him about coming here, one of the big things about this particular day is that it's not only the Dragoon family here that's talking about their equipment, but the, but the representatives from the companies themselves, and we have one right here. And your name? Uh, Carl Dilcher. Okay, ta Carl, you are with a company called? Eggbag Corporation out of Astoria, Oregon. And my hometown, I live outside of Buffalo, New York. And I covered a New York and New England area for Ag Bag Company. Okay, how long have you been with them? I just started with them uh, less than six months ago. How do you get a job like that? Well, I started out working for a distributor for eight years, and they called me one day and asked me if I was interested in the job. And a distributor of Ag? No, of another line of equipment. Another line of equipment. All right. What is Ag Bag? Do they have different... Uh, nope, that's our main line is the baggers and the big plastic bags you see with the okay, silage. Okay, see, uh, I, I was raised on a farm, but it was a different kind of farm than right. it is today. So you're talking about the big plastic that goes yeah. around the roll, the bale Either roll? Either round bales, we have a round bale machine, and we also have this machine which will pack your silage, either corn silage, hay silage, or high moisture corn into a big tube and store it that way, airtight. Keeps so, it 100 percent. So stable. these uh, uh, worms I see on top of the ground, all that's white. Those. That's the corn that's in there. Corn or, or hay or, or hay. grass or. But um, mostly cut up or ground all up. All cut up and ground up. How do you get it from there to the farm? Take it out with a payloader. Most guys use a payloader, whether it be a skid steer or a, uh, a regular payloader on the front of a tractor, and then put it into a mixer wagon and feed it to your cows. So. You tear the bag, so to Cut see. the bag back to however far you're going to feed. If you're going to feed out two feet, you cut back two feet. You scoop in, take it out, put it into your mixer, and feed it. One of the big things about this whole product is to make sure they cut the bag so you can sell another bag next year. Right. Exactly? Exactly right. <laughs> All right. Carl, uh, obviously you lay the bag and you bring the product to the bag along wherever you're going you're gonna to park it for the winter. Right. And then, you, and then how is it shoved into the bag? It's compacted in with <coughs> a set of fingers on the inside. Can, you, can we see any of this sure. at all? Can you, you grab it? Right okay, okay. Okay. The bag you put on the outside of the tunnel. And it's that big around? It's this big around. This is the smallest unit. This is an 8-foot diameter. We make them all the way up to 12 foot. And how long can they be? Up to 250 feet. Unbelievable. Okay. The biggest unit will hold up to 500 ton of feet in a bag. The smallest unit's 100 foot long, or you can cut it down any dimension you want. You put the plastic bag on here, slides completely around, tucks under the lip here. Uh huh. And then you tie it off on the backside, and that rotor with the teeth will pack the feet into the bag. And we have a brake setting that holds the pressure so that you pack the feed it all at one time. You pack it and seal it all at one time. And as the machine the brake gets up to this brake pressure, the machine will move forward and the bag stays in one position. So the machine the bag sits here and then the machine goes that direction. So your your my my problem here is that this bag is let's say hundred feet long. Right. And when you're filling it, you're filling in the, the closed end. Right. And it, so it's all piled up here? Right, you're piling, you're compacting oh, it. Oh, so it's all, then it keeps on coming the off. The tractor sits to the Got front you. in neutral. Right. And then the pressure against the bag pushes 
this unit forward. Okay, now the item that you're going to pack in here is brought to this machine, to this machine. on an unlo uh, un unloading wagon. Okay, and you can show us over here. Like an unloading wagon over there. Okay. And it's taken. And the it wagon would come up to the side of the machine. This unit here will slide down. And then your forge is put into here, up through. And this is a conveyor belt conveyor that will bring it up over. Picks it up, drops it into the hopper. And the hopper then takes it into the compaction teeth. And the compaction rotor presses it into the bag. How old is this process? This process, Ag Bag, is in their 15th year this year of making baggers. So it's been in the market for 15 years now. So what you're telling me here is that farming is changing all the time. Oh, yes. It's no, see, I've been off a farm for <laughs> my God, 40 years. You know, it, it just, it, you, I wouldn't recognize going onto a farm right. anymore. Uh, the, the, as you looked inside, that thing is turning all the time. It's kind of right. shoving it out into the... Pushes it down and out. Okay. Lots of power here. This is a power takeoff. Power takeoff unit run from your tractor. And uh, this is the smallest unit. This is a G6000 model. We'll do about a ton, ton and a quarter a minute. A we minute? Have, a minute. We have a model which is called a G7000, which will do two and a half to three ton a minute. And that is a table unit where you would take a dump truck and dump the load on it and it will feed it. And then we have a model called the M9700, which will do 15 ton in a little over a minute. <laughs> that has a 300 horse Caterpillar engine on it. So we have variations of from the small dairy farmer right up to the guy with two to three All thousand right. cows. What's the average length of a bag that would be an average farmer would use? The average farmer in this area are using a 150 to 200 foot bag in a circumference of eight to nine foot. Right. Would it be better to have three 50 uh, foot bags or one 150 foot no, bag? No, it's just, it'd be the same. Uh, as far as three 50 foot bags, your feet is sealed from end to end. The only part that you are getting air onto is the face that's open. Can I assume from that you get very little spoilage? No spoilage at all. Less than 1% spoilage. All right. Now, that was one of the problems you had with open silo. You always had to eat An open silo, a bunk silo, will be the average is about 20% spoilage. A pile, piled out in a field, will be anywhere from 35 to 40%. And even the upright silos are in a neighborhood of 10 to 15%. Right. Up until the time it hits this ag bagger, the silage and everything that it does to make it silage is the same whether you, they put it in a silo, into, into open, or into here, exactly right. until it gets to right. here. This is the addition this right here, the addition at this and point. the bag. This is the power takeoff we were telling you about. This folds down and plugs into the back of a tractor that has a, a, a worm... Uh, yeah, your PTO drive off your tractor. You can see the cables on, it, on the unit are 200 foot long. The cables are what goes, there's a backstop that goes on the back of the unit. And that holds the bag for the pressure. You okay. set your brake pressures right here on this unit. Setting this brake pressure. This sets the brake on the drum, which holds the bag until you get to the desired pressure that you want your feed. At that point, the tractor is hooked up to the tongue with your PTO, and the pressure is then relieved through the hydraulic brake. And then the tractor in neutral will slide forward as the bag's being filled. So there's no driving at all of the tractor. It's all done yeah. in neutral and just pulls right. right forward. This is one of those expenses the farmer has that may only be used a week a, week a year. Uh, the, average, possible, right? the average farmer will use first cutting hay, second cutting hay, third cutting hay, oh, and then also the corn. corn. Okay. So he could, he could do silage corn and he also can do high moisture earlage and also high moisture corn. So if a person were going to do this, you don't have to build such big buildings because you don't have to store it right. inside anymore. You don't have any storage problems. You can also feed on different farms where you can take the feed to the different areas where if you have an upright silo, wherever that upright silo is, that's where it's going to be for the next whatever amount of years. This okay. can move from farm to farm. All right, we've been talking with Carl from Ag Bagger. Thank you very much, Carl. Thank you. Appreciate your talking to us. And I, I guess we understand a little bit better. We're not all farmers out there, but it, 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 what the big thing, what's the price of something like this, this one? This one here Give or take? for 17000 17 and the bigger ones? Uh, 210 So you see it's not all profit, is it, on the farm? <laughs> a lot of investment, as we were talking with uh, uh, Bob Dumas. There's an awful lot of investment in the farm for equipment like this, that, and you need it. You just need it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm over here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we were talking with Wade earlier. We brought up the name Gale, G-E-H-L. And I, and I, we did gather this is their first year. 
uh, with the Dragoons, and uh, they have a representative here who will tell us all about their equipment. And your name? Murray Cohn. Murray? Yes. Okay, Murray. Uh, you're a representative of the company? Yes, I'm a factory representative. Uh, work for Gale Company and I travel the northeastern United States area. The whole northeast? Uh, all of New England and part of New York. What do you call home? Uh, New Hampshire. All right. Uh, where is Gale uh, based? Uh, is there? Uh, well, we have several factories around the country. Our main head office uh, is in uh, Wisconsin at West Bend. Okay, there's a lot of things happening in, in Wisconsin for farm equipment, huh? Very much so. Yeah, uh, a lot of companies. Big companies out yeah. there. All right, now these are some of your various things that you, that you handle. Yes. Uh, is there one kind of a product you make? Is it mostly with a, a silage or...? Well, we've been very much noted over the 140 years uh, history that the company's been in business. That long? We've been around. I think there's only one other ma major manufacturer that's been in agricultural continuous manufacture longer than that. Uh, so we're the, the second oldest in the country. Uh, we've been very much noted over the, those years as uh, forage harvesting and, and forage handling equipment. Uh, we've basically stuck with implements uh, and material handling and, and feeding the li uh, helping the livestock handler. Uh, that's basically our forte. Uh, forage harvesters have been a big part of our business for many years. Uh, forage boxes, uh, mold conditioners, hay handling equipment. Uh, but we've had a big boost in our product line over the last several years where we've gone out and bought other companies that have made niche markets for themselves. For example, this particular manure spreader here used to be the Headland Martin Company out of Pennsylvania. The which, which company? The Headland Martin Company. All right. And you never had manure spreaders before? Uh, box spreaders. Uh, this was a new innovation that the Headland Martin boys, uh, sorry, that the Martin boys uh, developed several years ago. We ended up uh, seven years ago buying out this particular product line from them, and now we have a brand new uh, $10 million plant in Lebanon, Pennsylvania, that makes this particular product. Uh, mix of feeder wagons that you see behind us here, and this uh -huh. was uh, a new acquisition of ours four years ago from another leading manufacturer of mix of feeder wagons, and we took over this line exclusively at that time. So how many different pieces? Have you any idea how many different types of pieces you make? Uh, Not taking sizes. Well, see, uh, yeah, most of our different models, for example, this particular unit has five different model sizes. Right. This unit here also but has five. Counting this is only one for the five. How many would you say different kind of products? We're looking, because we're adding and taking away all the time, yep. we're looking at uh, probably a couple of dozen different okay. brands. And you're always looking to, to improve all the time? So all you're working on... Uh, items now for the next 5, 10, 15 years exactly, in advance. Huh? Exactly, yeah. We're, uh, you know, our engineers are always involved in uh, advancing the spreader designs, uh, improving those as they go down the road. Uh, same with mixer feeders, uh, forage harvesting systems. You know, that's a new design. Now, Murray, you have distributors. We have dealers. Dealers, all right. Yeah, I work. How soon, how close would you have a dealer? Would you sell another dealer in Rouse's Point or no, see, 30 we, miles from here? We normally look at, uh, when we set up dealers, we normally look at a geographical area, like a county area, market penetration, uh, what the competitors are doing in that area for volume business. Uh, for example, Clinton County here has not had a Gale dealer in it for I, way before my time. Uh, we have our major competitors are here in this area, and we haven't been taking part in the competitive business here. Uh, Jack had been looking for a, an expansion line to uh -huh. to handle mixer feeders and there's a lot of products that we had that he did not have access to. Well, you know, even though you say they haven't been here for years, Gale is well Gale's known in this area. Very much so. It, it's a very well known old, as it is 140 years. I didn't know it was that old, but I was raised on a farm and I don't know if my father had any Gale, but I know the relatives had Gale right. equipment. I don't know whether they bought them in this area or where, but uh, Gale is not unfamiliar to me. Very much so. Uh, we have got a very good dealer network in Vermont, but the lake tends to be a natural oh, yes, barrier absolutely. where people don't come across. It used to be 50 cents to cross the bridge. We didn't co cross as much. Not because we couldn't afford it, it just seemed like a barrier. It so. is. It's, it's just like okay. a mountain, uh, a mountain yeah. range. Uh, we have dealers in Vermont that may be only uh, 40, 50 miles apart, but you have the mountain yes. range like Jay Peak there, and right. he's going across yes. the mountain to do right. business. So, so uh, did you tell me how long you've been with Gail? Seven years. Seven years. All right. Uh, so you're traveling a lot like this. And yes, I'm on you, the road. You, are there any shows like this where you? At this time of year, you get quite a number. Uh, we've, this'll be, we've got one or two more to do, but okay. most of the dealers do do open houses that we attend. Okay, we know a little bit about Gale, about the company, uh, 140 years old. Uh, 
and we know about these two pieces we see here, and we know a little bit about Murray. Thank you very much, Murray. Thank you. Uh, it's always nice to talk with someone with two initials, H and S, it says right there. It's a Super 7 plus 4. And your name? Ron Galbraith. Ron, are you with H&S? Yes, I work for H&S Manufacturing. So what is your job? I'm the territory rep. I cover the East Coast for H&S Manufacturing. So you're here to help Jack today with this and to explain your product? Correct. Good. Well, I hope you'll explain to some of these people out here who are, what am I looking at this huge item? This is a forage box. This is, they fill it, they load this with a chopper and they take the corn or the haylage from the field to the silo or to a bunk. Okay, let's get back here. You, when you say forage, you mean anything that's been cut up? Corn, hay. Okay, so the tractor would be pulling this. Correct. The clevis goes down through here, uh, and it's and it's you pulling. Got a, and you got a forage harvester, and then the tractor's in oh. front of the forage harvester. Oh gosh! So you're chopping into the forage har harvester and loading your forage box. That's a long way from the front to the back, isn't it? Yes, it is. Okay, so you're going along the corn, and that's going to be sticking out somewhere, so you don't run over it. Right. And you're cutting the corn. How many rows at a time? Oh, depending on the size of the two, chopper, three, four, four rows. Four. Four. Okay, and you chop it, and it fl fl goes through here. Fills it up here. All right. Do those things that turn have anything to do with when you load it? No. Yes, All right. So you fill it right up to the top? Correct. I mean, how much? Up to the top. How much will it hold? Uh, up to 10 tons. This box here will handle 12 tons. So it's completely enclosed? Right. All right. Then when you get it filled, what do you do? Then you're going to take it to your side. Oh, wait a minute. you got to, you got to unhook it. Hook it onto a, a tractor. Another tractor. So usually you're, it's another box, but you only had one box. No, I usually have two to four boxes. Okay, so another tractor would grab it and bring it into... The silo or into a bunk. But sil silo. Or into one of those baggers. Or into a bagger, correct. Okay. Then what happens? Then you're going to... This is going to be hooked up to the tractor. Right here, power take off. Right. All right. And then this is going to unload into the silo. Okay, so... And, and this will make this turn. Right. And it also will come from the back. And the beaters. Be turning and okay, so it goes into a blower, right. it'll blow it up, or a bagger, right. or into a, a pit. You know pit okay. And that's it? That's it. A crop right. carrier, I guess, basically what you can call it. What's the difference in this one than one 15 years ago? 15 years ago, uh, they're, a lot, they're a lot bigger in size. Uh, most of them back years ago were six ton. Most of them didn't have the roofs on. If you look at the old ones, they're in the field. Excuse me, here. Roofs on them to keep the leaves uh, in the, like when you're cutting haylage. Uh, today they're basically they're built for three and four years ago or four years production. Now you're, you've got a guarantee on them for 10 years. Uh, they're built a, a lot sturdier for the load that they're carrying from six ton. Now you're carrying up to uh, 12 ton, 14 ton, depending on the size of the box. Do you make different sizes? Yes, we make 14, 16, 18, which this is, and a 24. Wow, wow. Have you any idea uh, of, of silos that are filled, uh, excuse me, haylage or uh, forage that's made, uh, how many put it in this kind of a unit, yours or somebody else's, in, in contrast to the old chopper, blower type thing? Do they still do it that way? Yes, it's basically still done with a chopper, blower, though. But I mean, the other way, you bring the corn to a location, you chop it at the silo. Is that done no, anymore? The chopper is what's, it's being chopped as it's... Oh, yeah, but that's the way it used to be done. You, the chopper still, was at the silo. Okay, no, the but, chopper's in the field. Okay, so most people have a, some kind of a rig like this now. Right. All right. All right, so what do we, here I take it as a manure spreader. This is a manure spreader that'll spread both liquid and solids. In other words, pen pack, calf pen manure. Uh, it'll also take liquid out of a tank. It'll do both manure, both types of manure. Okay, uh, Calvin's looking in now. You got twin, twin worms in here? Twin augers. Okay. On the bottom, and it takes it back. And then that beater in the back will take and shred the manure before it goes out the back end of the spreader. Well, now, it's, it's enclosed in the back. Does that open up? That'll open up. It'll be 30 inches high and 42 inches wide. So you can fill it right to the very back. Oh, yeah, you fill it and it'll be two, three feet above. On, Is on that right? Back. Liquid, of course, will just be as high as the sides. Don't you feel bad when they dirty this thing? Is it terrible after they look so nice right now? That's what it's made for. <laughs> <laughs> now, tell us, what's the big deal about everybody wants red or orange red? In, That's the the big in the farm equipment business, it just seems like uh, red's the standard color. Yeah. If you, if you had a different color, wouldn't that make it stick right out when you go by and... You don't no. want that, baby. h &S has been in business for 26 years, or 25 years, I'm sorry, and uh, we've been red since day one. Matter of fact, this is h &S's 25th anniversary, the, and we've been in New York State 13 years, and we have a manufacturing facility in Ripley, New York. 
So we in are Ripley. All right. So most of these boxes, uh, a lot of our equipment is manufactured here in New York State. Now I noticed it says the H and S is in Marshfield, Wisconsin. Correct. That's our main main plant. What brought about Wisconsin, the center of most most farm equipment? Uh, Racine, Wisconsin, all of the others. You know, you read about H and S, or I mean, uh, Wisconsin has sells more farm equipment than any other state in the country. Right. So, in other words, most of your manufacturers are going to be located in the state where most of the uh, machinery is You mean sold. they sell more within the state? Right. More sell, than they do in other states? They sell more manure spreaders, they sell more forage boxes than any other state in the country. Is there more farms there than most other states? Yeah, you have, you have a lot of smaller farms. There are anywhere from 60 to 100 head are your major farms. Mostly now. dairy. Right. Mostly dairy. Well, right. Wisconsin is considered a dairy state. Okay. That's what they're called. You're right. You're right. <laughs> Minnesota, 10,000 la 10, lakes. Right. All right. Uh, what else do you manufacture besides the the forage wagon and the spreader? Anything else? Well, we carry slant bar feeders. We carry bale thoracs for kicker balers where you're throwing the bales into the after you bale it, okay. take them back to the barn. Uh, hay tetters for tet machines. We carry up to 32 foot wide rakes. So uh, does does uh, Jack carry all that here? Yes. All right. How long have you been with Jack? Uh, Jack about eight years. Okay. Anything else I should know about you or the company? Uh, just the finest line of farm equipment around. Oh, would you repeat that, please? Just the <laughs> finest. <laughs> well, go ahead. I'm giving you another chance. <laughs> it's the finest line of farm equipment around. I didn't know if you knew what you said. I want to make sure <laughs> if, you, if you wanted to repeat it or not. <laughs> Thank you very much for talking with us. It's nice that these smiling representatives, would your wife say you're always like this? You always smile like this? Oh, yeah. Our wives don't say that when we're not with them. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>
and the economics work out to be about the same, a broadcast application of herbicide compared with a banned application plus two cultivations, the cost of those tr two treatments are about the same. You know, it's strange when you said that, they, they, that they're learning that they could do it by cultivation. I was raised on a farm, and <laughs> I never heard of doing uh, uh, any way except cultivated. We had cultivators on each side of the tractor. We'd go down and do three yeah. or four rows at a time. And, and when you talk about it like it's something that's brand new, it's been done, always done that way before. Well, up until around the 1960s, almost all the corn in the state was controlled, the weed control was done with cultivation. You have to be very careful, Jim, because you're going to give my age away. <laughs> if you, if you, if you don't mention any dates, please. Okay. See, or, <laughs> no, uh, that's quite all right. About, about 30 years ago. <laughs> all right. <laughs> oh, thanks. All right. So then it went into mostly uh, Most, chemical. Mostly chemical control. And you spray it? And we broadcast spray. The reason for that is that a lot of our corn is grown by dairy farmers in the state. And dairy farmers have lots of problems with time and labor. Uh, cultivation is a fairly timely, uh, it takes, it's time consuming. Yes. And so what herbicides allowed was a tremendous savings in time and labor. And for that was one of the main, main reasons why dairy farmers so readily switched to using herbicide. Um, you want to be making hay at the same time that you need to cultivate. And so when farmers realized that they could control weeds by a, a single pass early in the season, it made, was a tremendous savings. Well, now we're recognizing that although it was a tremendous savings in time and labor, there are some downsides to controlling weeds with, with herbicides. Uh, we have increasing concerns over um, contamination of our ground and surface waters by herbicides uh, and pesticides. A lot of farmers are reluctant to go through all of the regulatory processes in order to use herbicides. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are just saying, well, maybe we could look at cultivation again. And our research shows that it can be a, a very viable tool as part of an integrated weed management program. Farmers may not want to go back completely to cultivation, but there are ways of combining uh, using chemical weed control with cultivation that give you the advantages of both systems. And so that was one of the things that we were presenting this morning. The other thing that makes it new is that we're, going to, we're, we're seeing on the market now lots of new equipment that really greatly expand both the options of, of um, weed control using cultivation and give you better results than what you might have gotten back 30 years ago. <laughs> Or more. Yeah, or more. <laughs> but, uh, Jim is the one who, who can tell us a, okay. a little bit more about that. Did you, did you, were you brought up on a farm? Yes. Ah. And you and I used that same cultivator. That same cultivator, about two it, or three times it, that we it, did it. It had two rows yes. mounted on the front of the tractor. Exactly. And in the early cultivation, when the corn was spiking out, you putted along at a mile an hour. Right. It took forever to do 40 acres. Yeah. Okay. And there are farmers, many farmers, our age, okay? And they have had this experience, all right? Then there's another group of farmers, younger than we, who have had, in many cases, no experience with cultivator. Because during the time that they've been farming it, in these more recent years, it's been, in many cases, exclusively an herbicide control. Okay, so what I would like to bring to folks is this. To people of our age, I would say, hey, equipment has changed considerably. There is equipment available today that was not available in a bygone era that will enable you to do mechanical weed control in a more timely fashion, more cost efficient, and achieve results that in many cases are comparable to a broadcast herbicide application. And we have a fair amount of research data that points that out. So Jim, I'd really like to uh, okay. have people take a look at some okay. different Jim, uh, get personal for a minute now. Yeah. Did you ever go out at night, maybe later than usual, and the next day be cultivating? <laughs> listen, listen, now wait a minute. You're way ahead of me. Listen, and you notice that you're not quite following it, and you look down and you pulled up about eight or ten pieces oh. of corn, oh. and you know your dad's going to look, so you get up and you go put it back in the ground. <laughs> Did you ever do that? Well, I, on one occasion I can remember, 
Uh, it was one of the, those warmish kind of June days. Oh, you doze. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yes. and, and I had this good lunch. Yeah. All right. Oh, and yes. I was sitting on the farm yeah. all yeah. and going down the row. And it was a long way to the other end of that row, and the sun was warm, and my belly was full. And the next thing I knew, yes. and I got almost to the end of the field, and I, I looked back, and there, lo and behold, were two strips of quack grass and not a piece of corn in sight. All right. And so, yeah, I've had that experience. The only thing worse than that is to look back and see your dad <laughs> back, back there wondering what you're doing. <laughs> well, fortunately, that, that field was, was out of sight of, of, of the barn where he was working. But uh, I don't remember if he caught up to it that fall at harvest time or not. He probably did. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So what you're doing here today, then, you had how many people? About 35. All right. Now, they apparently, I talked to two different ones. They apparently are going to get some kind of credit for being here. Yes. They're not going to get paid, but they're going to be able to do something. You have to have a license to use chemicals today? Yes, yes. you have to have a license. Yes. You have to be a certified applicant. So it means you've got to have certain training or you can't yes. get the license. Right. right. First you have to be trained and then you have to keep that training current. And Beth is one of the people in, the, in this region that runs a lot of these different Okay, so you do, you'd go to several of these, Beth? Yes. Right, you'd go to several of these and then you would qualify? Um, our farmers are usually in the category called a private applicator and they have to accumulate 10 recertification credits between the times they have to recertify. Okay. So this one that took this morning was worth a half credit. A half? Mm -hmm. Hey, you got to work for you it. you got to go to two, you have to, two well, people well, and it's uh, only a half? Two it, weeks it ago, only th it was only an hour. So okay. It was only an hour presentation. Right. Yeah. Right. Two weeks ago, we had um, four morning and afternoon sessions that were worth two credits each. At the office? Yes. You know, we go by there. And don't you ever have a parking lot empty? There's so many people there most of the time. We actually had some people call last time. They didn't come because they couldn't find a place I to park I can't believe all. how oh, busy wow. that is there. It really yeah. is. It's a lot better than it was when we were downtown, though. It's certainly. Oh, yes. That's great. Yeah, place to put them. All right. So they would. you mostly talked this morning? I talked to folks. Yeah. Jane talked to folks. I, I showed them some of the iron here okay, so they could take a look at it. Okay. Yep. Uh, uh, well, I never, I never, I never called a video anything like that. No, you didn't. I sure did. No, you didn't. Okay, so what? Now, what? Do, what can you show us here? Uh, well, we can we can start off by okay. taking a look at this machine here. Okay, now that's the cultivator. That's, that's the row crop cultivator. That's correct. Like like for corn, yeah. corn and other crops as well. But corn is the principal. Remember, crop. if you go offline here, you're going to pull up an awful lot of four uh, rows. rows at one this, time. This is a four row rig, and much of our work is done with four row or six row equipment. This particular cultivator, unlike the one you used and I used as a boy, mounts on the back of the tractor. Yeah. On the three point. We could hitch. see ours. Here, this you can. That's right. Turn around. As, as one guy said, just go down the row and don't look back. Yes. And All of right. course, you're up so high today and you're enclosed. Yeah. We didn't have those things. We didn't have air conditioners. No, no. But uh, this is a fairly common configuration for a, uh, what's called a conventional cultivator. It has these S tines, which are a fairly recent innovation. And they are easier to maintain than some of those old round shanks that you and I worked with when we okay. were kids. Okay. So that's one thing that's going on. Is there's been a change in the configuration of the shanks. Another thing that's happening is there are rotary hoes. Unfortunately, I don't have one here. Can you shoot this picture? Right, just a second. Let me just oh, show you yeah. first of all here. Oh. Uh, what he's talking about, the, the row of corn where it's actually planted is here. And those knives will, will uh, cut off all the weeds in between the two rows. And this is not supposed to hit the corn, and there's only <laughs> six inches there, you know, you know, and that's down in the ground, uh, four inches or no, not it, that much, about two inches. That's all you inch put, and okay. Two inches, yeah, yeah. You don't want to be too terribly deep with it. All right. Yeah. But uh, <coughs> I, I don't know. If I can pick this. Oh, it'll pick it up great. This is a rotary. We get over hole. here. Okay. Okay. Now there are two distinct advantages to this particular machine. Number one, it goes in the row as well as between the rows. When the corn is small, it leaves the corn and it takes out weed seedlings. It won't take out large weeds, but it'll take out weed seedlings. How does it know? It doesn't have to know. <laughs> it. The corn has got a tap root on it. Okay. It's down in the ground. Deeper. And most of our, our most troublesome weeds are very small seeded annuals. They have very shallow roots when they're small, when they're just emerging from the soil. 
And you know the nice part about this? You can do this at 8 or 10 miles an hour. Oh, Not yeah. one yes. or two miles yeah. an hour, but 8 or 10 miles an hour. Now, is there a charge for this, uh, these courses? No, there, there is usually. How expensive is that? Um, the sessions that we held, the four morning and afternoons were five dollars for each session. Okay. But these are things that you need out there. And remember, the Cornell Extension Service is there. You to become better farmers, produce better crops, the easiest way possible. And I'm glad to see they're going back to the old ways. Our old way, right? in, in, environmentally safe. Yes, environmentally environment, safe. yes, we were very environmental safe. Yeah, the, the worst lot of, thing lot we of, lot of sweat, a lot of oh, sweat. Oh, sweat! That that never hurt anybody. <laughs> but the worst thing we ever had was the the smell of making spreading our fertilizer it was the worst part of when I was back on the farm, I guess. And they even said that was healthy for us. No problem there. <laughs> yeah. Sinus has never bothered no, no, us at all. Clear them right out. Clear them right out. <laughs> all, right. Yeah. all right. So. Uh, this is all part of Cornell? Yes. Okay. Yep. The, these are the results of some of the research work that yep. has been done in recent yep. years. By the way, let's, personally here, how long have you been at the college? I'm going to get back at you for those 30 years. <laughs> how, long you been, how long have you been at the college? I've been there since uh, the fall of 1987. Right, and your home was where originally? Where uh, you from? Syracuse, New York. Right in Syracuse? Yep. So you weren't raised on a farm? Uh, no, I wasn't. All right. and, and where are you, were your home originally? Originally I come from southern Wisconsin. I was spent all my youth in a, far, in a farming situation, uh, growing crops, milking cows yep. here in the Midwest. And uh, I have spent most of my life around farming in one capacity or another. You know, Jim, we were just talking to the, to the uh, rep, rep here from H&S uh, Farm Equipment, and he said that there are more manure spreaders and boxes for uh, forage boxes sold in Wisconsin than any other state in the Union. It's probably more made in Wisconsin. It's a big, and most of the farms are 100 or less cows. Smaller farms in Wisconsin than there are in other states. Does that strike any bell with you? Well, it does and it doesn't. First of all, I have not lived in Wisconsin since I was about 21 years old. All right, that's I, a long time ago. <laughs> hey, but I I do go back there occasionally because I have an extensive uh -huh. family that lives in southern Wisconsin. Uh, Wisconsin is a very diversified economy. It's been progressive. It is, has a very strong progressive tradition in the agricultural field as well as other fields. There are numerous manufacturers there. Brilliant, for instance, uh -huh. is located there. And numerous other manufacturers are located in Wisconsin. Okay. Uh, the, the size of the farm, I'm not equipped to comment okay. on that. We're going to take a short break because this is a little bit longer interview than we've had. We'll take a short break and be right back. You're watching Hometown Cable. I'm Bob Venn, Jane and Jim, and Beth, Calvin <laughs> on the camera. What's going on here? We're at Dragoon's Farm Equipment. We're having a great time today. Cornell Extension Service. What is this we're looking at? Okay. This is a disc gang that is I removed from a rolling cultivator. And this essentially does the same job that those shovels we looked at earlier. You run a pair of these, one on both sides of the corn row. All two right. of three each. So there's there's two two of these disc gangs. Yep. Just substitute that disc gang basically for that gang right there of shovels. Right. All okay. Right? Yeah. And what one of the things that this will do that that machine has difficulty with is it'll operate in a situation where there is heavy residue. Now to come into compliance with conservation laws, etc., farmers are going to find increasingly that they have to deal with a residue a crop residue in a newly planted field of row crops. And this is one of the devices that will help them deal with that because it won't load up. It won't plug up with the old corn stalks and, and, the, and the various other crop residues. Okay, this device is a high clearance shank. It's the big, big brother of those smaller shanks mm -hmm. we looked at. And here again, it enables a farmer to do the same thing to cultivate a row crop in a heavy residue situation without loading the machine up. And basically that's what we're looking at. Mm -hmm. There's a changing situation out here that these farmers have to operate in, and this is to help them do the job. Remember, these people aren't selling anything except intelligence. And what's right. going on, right? You're not selling equipment. We're selling ideas. Ideas, all right. We are we're, selling ideas. We're trying to be out in the front looking at problems that farmers are going to have, um, particularly 
looking at ways that farmers can use cultivation as they come into compliance with, with soil conservation. The need to have residue on the soil in order to protect the soil and at the same time uh, wanting to decrease herbicide use in some ways seems uh, somewhat contradictory. But the new equipment is one way of, of dealing with that, that contradiction. Uh, you don't necessarily, if you're going to cultivate, have to use a piece of equipment that, that's going to you know, plug up. There's new equipment coming mm -hmm. out and we want to, we want to uh, start doing research with that so that by 1995, when farmers have to be in compliance, uh, that we will have some methods and some ways for them to use cultivation and still be in, in compliance with um, you know, residue cover. Okay, we've been talking with uh, James Mount Pleasant and James Frisch. Close enough? Close enough. Close enough. Close I thought enough your name most. would have to be Hanson or uh, Thompson or something no, when you come from Wisconsin does, it out doesn't there. Has, it doesn't huh? have to be Hanson or something. Not out there? No, <laughs> no, no. It, it could be a number of names. Norwegians in that area? Well, or? As a matter of fact, the county I grew up in was called Dane County. 70% of the people who lived there when I was a boy were of Norwegian extraction. Yes, yes. But there were a whole bunch of us Frishes and Essers and people like that around. So oh, we, yes. we weren't all Norwegian. You weren't all from Scotland no, either? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> right. Beth, would you uh, come over and see uh, how are things been going at Cornell this past year? Good? Very, very your, busy. Your attention, very busy? We um, had some wonderful workshops this spring on helping farmers manage their manure better um, in timing, where to put it on, which fields, when, so that it will not run off or, or be lost into surface waters, and also um, realize what potential there is in manure for fertilizer, except that to use it, you have to be sure that you really get it on evenly, or the crops where you've missed a spot will be short of, of nutrients. So we had a lot of workshops dealing with those. The farmers came for three days to them. And then we've been following up with the farmers to help them complete their plans. You know, they've got soil tests for de deciding what the fertility level of each individual field is, um, going back and, and what manure and what fertilizer has been put on there in the past, and is it applied evenly enough so that we can count it and then subtracting out and figuring out just how much fertilizer they will need to use this year or which fields they should prioritize to put their manure on because that's where they can reduce their fertilizer bills the most. We were talking to a man from Saranac talking about uh, potatoes. His name is Duquette, and I couldn't help but think of it, uh, the uh, Chattagay, Cherubusco area, and Miss Primo. What's Miss Primo doing this year? Um, she's a senior at Cobal Skill and looking forward to graduate school. Saw her name in the paper several times. She was, she was a... Uh, she was the um, Queen? Queen? Mary Maple Queen. Maple Queen, yes. Yes, she was. She, she impressed me. Yeah, yeah nice You're person really to have it. Down. She certainly was. Hey, we've been talking, enjoying this uh, very much, talking with Jane, Beth, and Jim, and Bob. And Bob. Who was here long before 1961. Thank you, Jane. <laughs> <laughs> we liked these people so well, we decided not to leave. Someone said when we got off, he said, well, they talked about a 1995 uh, compliance. Said, Does anybody know what we're talking about except those three people? And I don't think you do. So we said, let's get back and find out what this is about. Uh, Beth, start us off on that. Um, there is nationally something called the Food and Security Act that people normally refer to as the Farm Bill includes many things. It includes um, food stamps even and things like this. But the parts that we are c concerned with is that for farmers to participate in some of the cost sharing programs like we have for doing new conservation methods or for particularly when they're starting to adopt a new practice and that's a risk to a farmer you know is this going to work as well and change their their whole methodology sometimes for these. So the government has made a decision to help them offset some of those costs. In order to be eligible for that, they have to have their farm um, looked at by the Soil Conservation Service who goes around and, and determines various things that they really need to do from an environmental standpoint. And one of those is that fields that are extremely susceptible to erosion, where the soil would run off the surface when it rains, are identified. And on those fields, they either have to reduce the number of years that it can be in a row crop to one or two, and then sometimes they have to go to no tillage or minimum tillage where instead of taking all the crop off, they have to leave some of that crop just on the surface of the soil so that raindrops and things like that would hit the, the crop and soak into the soil instead of hitting the soil and starting to run off in a little river immediately. When you say row crop, you said it, you mentioned it and the others have, I can only think of potatoes and corn. What other yeah. row crops um, are we're there? We're going to have some soybeans in the county this year. But That's new for this area? Yeah. 
Um, we have been growing, Cornell has been growing them at their plots at Minor Institute for about 20 years and doing very well with some Canadian varieties. I think a couple farmers in, in Franklin County grew some a couple years ago. They have become very big business over on the western part of the North Country in Lewis and Jefferson County. So that's another row crop? That would okay. be another row crop, as contrasted to alfalfa or grass, which is more of a solid cover. Okay. AC, you want to add to what she said? No, I think she explained Showed it very, very well. well. Anything? Sounds good to me. You know what the worst thing was, instead of doing uh, cultivating, was trying to drag, because you didn't have, you could go big figure eight, do anything you want out yeah. there, and you were always in line, right? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to disrupt. Nothing to go wrong, Nothing right? to go Nothing wrong. Nothing to pull up or anything yeah. like that. Just don't go through the fence. Don't go through the fence. Yeah. No, I, I, I had the drags one time, and I, I went my no nose of my tractor into the ditch. Oh. And you can't back up you with drag. You can't back up with a drag. Oh, I had one for about an hour. And I bet you kept did. looking up to see if my father was watching <laughs> from up on the hill. And anyway, but enough about that, Dad. My dad is gone, but uh, I I can't say that I love the farm, but I it, it was good, clean living, and it was hard work. Hard work. Hard work. Yes. But it never hurt me. I guess. Yeah. Hey, you're still doing all right. It looks yeah. like. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna go out again. Oh, here we go. Oh. It looks like something you'd weld with. <laughs> what are these? Okay, uh, this here again now, Bob, as I was saying earlier, there is equipment coming online in recent years that is radically different in many cases from anything that you and I used years uh -huh. ago. These two items here straddle a corn row. This part with a gray prime on it operates below the soil level. And what it does is it compresses See, when you, before you enter the soil with it, they're about this close. As you enter the soil, the spring tension spreads them. Good, because you'd right. pull a lot of cords. That's right, you would. But these little fingers here, uh -huh. they're made out of spring steel, they compress the soil in that corn row. And did you, you probably in your garden, taken soil and just munched it up like this with your fingers? Maybe you've done that when you're trying to weed close around uh, uh, your, your, the bean row or whatever? I don't do much weeding oh, okay. where I well, don't have to. Uh, okay, so well, I don't, I don't well, plant much, I gotta well, okay. weed. If it's but there, it, I weed it. This, what this does in essence is it just compresses and lifts uh -huh. the soil in the row. A shallowly rooted weed is coming out. But the crop plant with a longer tap root, especially corn, is going to remain in place. It will not be disrupted by this. And th this this is a fairly radical idea. Yeah. It's something that's only come online but in farmers, the recent years. Farmers aren't one to like to change very much. Do you, oh. find, do you, do you believe that? Yes, yes. <laughs> so is this a problem to get the farmers to change into these things? Well, wait, there's two ways of looking at that. I mean, you say, is it a problem to get them to change? Well, maybe, but by the nature of the business, wouldn't you want to be a little bit on the conservative side? Number one, yes. most of the time, you get one shot a year. If yeah. you screw up, yeah. you are out for the year. Now, yeah. does, does it pay to be conservative? Well, no, but you see, it, it, what you've been doing it the same way all the time. I mean, I'm still fishing where I caught fish 30 years ago and haven't been any for 20 years <laughs> because it was a good spot many years ago. <laughs> then you are the ultimate conservative. <laughs> so what, we have a different one again? Okay. What we have here, Bob, is this is a tool that precedes that tool. <laughs> and what it does is adjacent to the row, it loosens the soil so that those spring tools will more effectively enter uh -huh. into the soil and compress that band of soil in the row. Things have changed in Things farming. Things have changed. But Things here's one changed. very important yeah. thing we might notice. You see yeah. this little uh, grease dirt grease right there? Because that was very important. My father said that was the most important thing on a, any piece of equipment. Keep it greased and keep it well oiled and well, it'll, he was it'll right. take care of itself, right? He was right. And that, that's one of their specials because yes. he wants this to turn yes. freely. Yes. All right. Anything else? Well, we've got one well, more. One more. Oh, my God. They keep coming different. One more show. Well, here again, this is an item that was designed specifically for row crops. These are all for, for row, row crops. crops. All right. And this one operates right in the row. Not alongside of it, in the row. And this time, these rotate around, and when it reaches the bottom of the cycle, this point is actually right in the corn row. But it's, it's difficult to use this tool. It takes really a good uh, operator yeah. to keep it adjusted, because if it operates too deep, it removes the corn. 
Right. Two things is, I think is happening. I may be wrong here. One is that you're removing the weeds and cultivating, and the secondly is you're aerating the soil to a certain extent. Do you yeah. want to do that? Yes. yes. You want to yes. loosen it up so yes. it doesn't pack down, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And you got even another. Well, these are another. Someone dreamed of these at night in their well, sleep. Look at the look at these. These tools that you see in front of us are the brain children, if you were, of one man. Huh. And he's a very, very creative individual. He's an exceptional individual. But uh, this is a more elaborate, heavy-duty version of the other spring tools that I yep. showed you. They operate in the same manner by compressing the soil. Okay. But you would use these at later stages of growth because they are more vigorous, more rigorous in their soil movement. You wouldn't want to use these on smaller plants. If you are a farmer out there and you don't know whether you're in compliance or not, and you've got two more years to do it, why don't you give a call to Plattsburgh at 56? Uh, I'll call the Soil Conservation Service at 561-7373. That's different than your office. Right, then. next right. door. 561-7373. Soil Conservation Service. And we've been very conservative today, haven't we, the three of us here? Yeah. Four of us, I've gotten myself, yeah. right? Yeah. Absolutely. Was it worthwhile talking? Aren't you glad you came and talked to me? Well, absolutely. I wouldn't have missed it. You wouldn't have missed it. This, this is the highlight of the season. <laughs> right here. Right Thank here. Thank you very, very much, everybody. <laughs> uh, I alternate between... Uh, I, can't, I can't think of his name. Your husband's name? Randy. Randy. Randy and Robin <laughs> when I go to the two places of business. She told me about her husband who works at uh, Prim Hall. When I went there, he said... Uh, you interviewed my wife and so forth. Okay, Robin, what's happened in the past year to you? What's important in your life in this past year? <laughs> Nothing, just working here at Dragoon. Well, that's very important. Oh, yes. What are you doing here? Are you selling cups and hats and things? No, this is a drawing for the farmers and the farmers' wives. You mean you draw a picture? If you can draw something, <laughs> they give you one of those? <laughs> no, there's a list up there. Oh, it's a, like a... You mean they're going to be names and things like that? Oh, yeah, I Robin. see what it is. I see what it is. All right. The people here, all these people behind making faces at you. See that? Uh -huh. All right. So this will happen when? Tonight when, it, when the show yes, is over? tonight at 7 o'clock. All right. Do they have to pay to get something here? I mean, do they no, have to? No, this is a drawing for all the farmers and their wives. So they they just, have a special they drawing for the women there this year. So they can win a watch. I, I mean, I can't wallet. win that watch. That's discrimination. Well, you can put your woman's That's name discrimination. <laughs> I should be able to win anything the women can win. You can put your name in there, okay? Is this your rule? <laughs> well, you're going to be held responsible. Remember, you're the one running this here. Even though you're doing it for somebody else, you're okay. the one going to be held responsible on this. <laughs> Robin, what do you do here at uh, Dragoons except uh, run games like this? Secretary. Secretary. You, you, you type? Uh, I type. Order, order items and things like that? Order parts for the guys. I go back and forth between secretarial parts. You work help. with Scarlett? Yes. Okay, and I know last year you told us you were here about a year or something, give or take. I was here, here a year in February. So you, you just a little over, you, we barely got you last year, you just got here. All right, and I remember that you're from Ohio. Yes. Is that right? Mm -hmm. You've been to Ohio in the past year? Yes. Your to family's me. all out in Ohio? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, what else do you want to tell me? Golly sake, we're, 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 not, we're, not out, <laughs> we're not out already. Are there a lot of people coming up and signing for these drawings? A lot of people, yeah. We have a big turnout this year. Bigger turnout, you think? Sure we were just we like were wondering if there's as many people or not as many people. It just seems that there's been a lot more. It's, this it's year. hard to tell. They they seem to be uh, maybe they're that's long. You're using the whole building this year. You know, even the other end is here. It there's a lot like more items more. In, inside of the office here. All right. Well, uh, whose office is this? Is this Wayne's. That's Wayne's office right there. Mm -hmm. So you don't have anything to do with. Uh, out here. Do you come out here and get orders for anybody? I or work with Wayne too because Wayne does work orders and then I put them into the computer. So I do a little bit of everything. When Jack hired me, he said, you, you do whatever. <laughs> so you do some work for Gary, you do some work for Jack, and you do some work for Wayne. Right. Uh, Gary, Jack, and Wayne are my three bosses. <laughs> what do you do when you have three bosses and one tells you to do something and while you're going to do it, the other one tells you to do something else? Jack's Jack's Whatever man. Jack tells you, he's going to be the one you Jack's do last. Man, yeah. <laughs> you get that, Jack? All right. And hey, wait, wait, wait. The biggest boss of all is who? Jack? No. One higher than Jack. Randy? Margaret. Oh. <laughs> right? I thought you meant my boss. Oh, you're. <laughs> all right. Robin Hemingway, uh, Randy, Mrs. Randy Hemingway, 
And uh, of course, everybody, uh, I should say, a large group of people know who Randy Hemingway is in the area. You live in Moore's 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 Forks. Forks. Okay. Thank you very much for talking to us. You're welcome. Aren't you glad this is over? Yes. <laughs> We've been looking around here for another one of the Case International uh, representatives, and we, we don't see him, but we got better than that. We got one man who works on them. And your name? Phelan. Minor. Uh, minor. Okay, Phelan. And uh, how long have you been at, you work here regularly, yep. full-time? Yeah, full-time. I've been here, uh, it be 13 years in September. What is your job here? I work on all uh, farm machinery, the implement. And, uh, you repair? Uh, repair yeah. them set them up for field demonstrations, take them out uh, for sales and stuff. Where do you get your training for that? Uh, well, basically I picked it up just working on the stuff. Do you go to schools at all? Do you have schools? I've been to a couple schools, yes. Are there TV videos on any of the yep. repairs? There are some of them. Uh, basic thing, no, is repairs are pretty much basic. Is If you can read a book, you can fix them. Oh, ho, 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 sure. <laughs> the guy told me, he says, if a man put it together, a man can, can fix it. Well, that's true. You got to know a little bit more than that, but you're mechanically minded, probably. Yeah. It takes that a little bit more than just, you know, it's not more than just common sense. Come oh, on, yeah. it's, it takes more than common sense. All right, uh, where are you from? Are you from here? No, I live in Chasey Lake. The miners are from up in that area, uh, Katyville, uh, Redford, right? Oh, yeah. The miners, yeah. My father worked for uh, Plattsburgh Agway for 32 years. He drove I, a feed truck. You know, I think my family is related to the miners some way, way back. Probably are. <laughs> the Vens, I believe. Are, the Vens uh, are probably related to my mother's side. Well, did your mother ever work at the post, uh, post office in Redford or Katyville or one no. of those places? No. There was one up there. That I knew. Okay. Tell us. I come by. I said, what in the world is this? It's got to be a corn planter, but well, what a big corn planter. This is a four-row uh, 900 cycle air planter. Uh, we'll do all three conditions, minimum till, no-till, and conventional planting. Oh, you're too fast. Too, I don't know what you're talking about. First of all, you didn't say corn planter. You said... Row planter. Uh, I said corn planter. Okay. So, but, <laughs> so it is only for corn? Corn. All right. Well, you can use it may, uh, probably for uh, different applications of corn. You know, you got different size drums. You can go with different size seed. Uh, this basic drum here will handle medium flat, small rounds, right up through the largest. Well, uh, Calvin's going over here. Maybe we should get over here a little bit and leave him some space here. Okay. My first mistake was I thought that this was to put the corn in. And he tells me that's not correct. No, this is the fertilizer hoppers. Both and these, one and this side. pulls out like this. Yeah, you pull it out like this and you put your fertilizer See, it's in. It's fastened so that it can, and there's a little uh, worm gear at the bottom. Well, these are your augers. You know, you have to... the, somebody in green behind us, Calvin. <laughs> Calvin, there's somebody in green behind us here. There, but they come to get the pancakes, don't you? Huh? Excuse me, just a minute. What are you doing here with the green uniform? Well, it's nice out, isn't it? It's going to get green pretty soon. Yes, it is. Hi, how are you? Good. How's the family? Good. All right. Did you save us any pancakes? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Jackson, they're eating some now, so oh. you better get there quick. Okay. Okay. John Deere on the hill uh, in uh, Ingraham. Huh? Tony and Marsha. Tony and Marsha. Yeah, I do Tony. I was trying to think of Marsha's name. All right. Now, this is for the fertilizer. Yep. So this is, we put the fertilizer in here, and the corn? Goes in here. Okay. Holds 15 bushel hopper, and it's pressurized with 8 to 10 ounces of air when you're planting. Now, a lot of people say, why the air? Well, the air does two things. Number one, the seed comes out of a chute, and I'll show you here. So it doesn't because you can blow it in the ground like a gun. No, no, no. <laughs> right. A lot of misconceptions about an air planter are that the seed gets blown too deep in the ground, which is a false Okay. See, we're talking to the right people here because he's got it repaired these. Look. Now, on this uh, drum assembly here, your corn comes out of the tube down here. This is a seed leveling bar. And what this bar does is it levels the seed out in the holes. The air pressure that comes out of this blower assembly here, which is in this area, holds the seed up in the little holes. And if I had some seeds with me, I could show you, but the air pressure holds the seed up in here. As the drum rotates around this way, this seed brush is re released for planting. And what it does is it brushes the excess seed off and it leaves one seed per hole. It gets over here, where these nice little wheels right here knock the seed off, 
they go down through the tubes right into the ground. So what you're telling me is because the air is being blown out of those holes, the seed follows that air jet right. and fills up the right hole. There. Okay. It stays right there. That's why uh, these are probably one of the the most accurate planter on the market. How long has a machine like this been, uh, been available? Uh, this air, cycle air? It started out with the 800 cycle airs, which, uh, well, they were probably 10, 11 years old. Uh huh. So they've been around quite a while. Now, this plant's four rows, you said at one time? Yeah, this is a four row planter. And uh, if we can get around to the back side. Okay. I'll explain some of the operations. Okay, we're going to walk right through here. I don't think we're turning the camera off, so we're going to see what the uh, fail we got. We certainly got the right person for this. <laughs> okay. Now, the, is there this is fertilizer also in here? No, this is for insecticide. When you want to put insecticide on, you have the T banding and stuff like that. So this all goes in at the same time. This, your fertilizer, all goes in. Oh yeah, it's all ran by a seed transmission in the middle where you set your populations and stuff for your seed. Now your seed will come down, follow these tubes right here. Okay, each each row has a tube, and the the seed follows it right down through where you have two discs. The two discs act in conjunction with each other so they form a nice slice in the ground you have a furrowing point underneath that opens up the ground the seed falls in behind that this little rubber right here holds the seed in place these two covering wheels cover the seed this packs it now could you adjust how often you want a seed to, to fall yeah that's other words, where you do it by uh, setting your uh, transmission for your population. Okay. You just change some gears around and that sets your population. What's normal? Every six inches, four inches? Well, it, depending on uh, on the farmer. Uh, 24,000 up to probably 29,000. What does that mean? Seeds per acre. All right. Okay, but I was thinking you, they aren't planted so many inches apart. Right? Well, if it you works go to, out that way. Some farmers like to see it uh, like you have uh, certain people they like seven inch their seeds seven inches apart then you have other guys they want them five and a half inches apart it well, doesn't mean because you plant more you're going to get more because you get too much of one there well it depends on your germination and the kind of soil and the soil and the weather and the weather yeah. all right so is this a relatively now I, I i don't want you to run your product now is this relatively a trouble free type of machine yes uh, for instance if this were new and I took it out and planted 50 acres, and everything is good in the, I mean, I'd like to get it done without any problems. Okay, and in other words, <laughs> I, I'm not gonna have you say that it's not, that it's not uh, reliable, but some machines just give you a lot of trouble, you know? Uh, some machines do, but it all d depends on uh, how you take care of them. Uh, these discs here are very critical to the planting depth. The smaller the disc, the more you have to tighten up your adjuster for your planting depth. Now, they have a gauge on here that you go by for your planting depth. If you want your seed two inches in the ground, all you gotta do is push this little lever in, turn the knob until you get up to like, say, for the last five or six years on every machine I've set up, the number's been around in between six and seven, okay, on the, on the scale. What's nice about this system here in the Case International is once you get one row set to the depth you want, you adjust the other rows to the same number and the machine will plant the same way on each row. Each of the four. Of the four. Now, you're, uh, you're the repair man, you're the expert, quote unquote, uh, at least the best in the area, correct? Now, what about the farmer? Can he take care of it himself? Can he do his own adjusting? Can he? Oh yeah. He, he can do that all right. When I take the machine out and bring it to the farmer and deliver it, I uh, go through the stuff with him, and then I like to like to keep track of them um, over the season. When they come in, I ask them how things are going, how the planter are going, and stuff like that. And I explain to them when I deliver the machine that these discs are very critical. The firming point underneath is very critical to the operation of the machine, and if they keep an eye on that stuff, they shouldn't have no trouble. Okay, when they keep an eye on it, what are they going to see that wouldn't be right? Well, sometimes you'll have uh, rocky conditions. 
When you get into rocky conditions, you're, you're going to chip some disc. All right. Okay. Or you may take the furrowing point and wear it off faster. Um, I've got some farmers, they, they probably get 60, 70 acres out of the furrowing points. Now, can they be repaired? Can they be adjusted? Or do you have to do it in? You put a new one in. Can he put those in himself? Oh, yeah. You can do yeah. that. All right. Uh, ballpark figure? Value? <laughs> I don't deal with the prices. That's okay. Jack's deal. <laughs> Good answer. No. All right. You want to take a break here? You want me to find out who Mr. Miner really is? Okay, Mr. Miner. If I ask you if you'd like to tussle me, with me right now and, 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 and uh, roll around on the ground, would you be willing to do that with me? Oh, yeah. Would you maybe hurt me? No. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that you're the wrestling coach. Yeah, I coach uh, JV wrestling at Northern Out Around Dyke during the winter time. How long have you been doing this? Five years. Were you a wrestler yourself? Oh, yeah. Where? Uh, at Northern Out Around Dyke. Okay. Uh, how many do you have on a team? Uh, last year's team, we had... JV, I'm talking about. JV wise, we had 22 kids. This year's JV squad, only eight came out. Uh, reason being is, when you get to be a senior, you cannot wrestle on the JV level as far as tournaments and the JV section. Uh, well, I was told it was because the JV coach is too tough. No. It's not that? No. <laughs> so tell me about your team. Uh, is it, is it, uh, uh, most people don't know much about wrestling. You know, we, we watch it on TV and we go through all the shows. It, it doesn't happen like that in real wrestling, right? <laughs> no, wrestling is, uh, uh, basically a one-on-one -on -one sport. You can't uh, knock a man down as easy as you can on TV, can you? <laughs> no, it takes a lot of practice and setups and learning your holes right and stuff like that. And that's where uh, our 7th and 8th grade team and JV team comes in to focus for the varsity squad. As uh, every sports program is, you need a basis to go bar to. And if you can start a good foundation, normally your varsity squad will be that peak that they can compete with anybody in the area. Okay. You have a 7th and 8th that's separate from your JV? Yeah. And you don't coach the 7th and 8th? No. When I first started coaching, that was my... Uh, okay. Now, when you get someone as a freshman who was in the 7th and 8th, are you going to coach much like the guy that had him in the 7th and 8th, or do you have a few different ideas? That's where... You where you got to change his... Uh, that's where uh, every sport is uh, individualized, and, you know, coaches are individualized. You may have, your 7th and 8th grade coaches may teach things a little different than what the JV coaches do. And the JV coaches don't teach the same thing as the varsity coaches do, okay? But all in all, the three coaches talk to each other and they come out with an idea of what they want to accomplish over the years. Now, they may have a different way of doing it. Right. But when it all boils down to it, is everybody ends up the same way and that's the main focus, is to keep the kids there. Would it be safe for me to say that you're not doing it because of the money? Yeah, that's safe <laughs> to say that. <laughs> uh, they don't pay you too much money as a coach? <laughs> no, uh, for the amount of hours you have to put in as a coach and uh, for what you got to do for the kids. You know, uh, every coach is in the same boat. Right. I don't how, how long of a period do you coach? Usually my season will start probably from the second week in November right up until March. That long? Yeah. Have you seen that cameraman before? Oh, I've seen huh? the cameraman before. He does your, some of your wrestling. Uh, how, what kind of a team did you have this year? My team was a very young team. Um, we had, like I say, we had some seniors that couldn't compete on the JV level that, level that couldn't make it onto the varsity squad, for one. Uh, number two is we had some kids that moved out of the district, so I lost a few wrestlers there. And uh, the team I had this year, I had uh, one kid who hasn't wrestled ever before. He came off of, uh, off a basketball team at the school and uh, ended up with a winning record and stuff. So we had a lot of young young kids that we made some mistakes, but I think over the season we learned. Right. Would you say that they wrestled to their uh, capabilities? Uh, capabilities? Oh yeah. You were satisfied. That I was satisfied. I was dissatisfied with a couple matches but uh, well, every coach happen. gets that way. Of course, of course. That, you, things happen when you don't know and it's not, if it was that way you wouldn't have to, ha, might just go by what's on the paper, right? That's true. If you went by abilities only, things happen. Yeah. But as uh, long as they did what you thought they, uh, you know, as well as you thought they could, and uh, you have the same people back next year more or less? Yep. 
what's what uh, what makes a man pr be promoted from a JV to a varsity if it isn't by class? Well, <laughs> for one thing, the varsity coach has to leave. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh, no, it's the varsity member. The coach. The coach. Oh, you said man. You I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You meant the I'm, kids. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. You're right. I mean, as a person who's on the JV team, how does he become a varsity wrestler? Well, if it isn't by class. A lot of hard work. Getting in the weight, the weight class, it's not got anybody there. Um, Can he ever get good enough to beat the varsity guy and, and, and to replace him? We've had, yes, there's been instances of that happening uh, where the, the varsity kid has not uh, gained in his skills where in the JV kid has and gained enough where he has been able to defeat the varsity kid and probably ended up going through the varsity season and having a good year. You've got to remember if your parents out there or if you're just watching, uh, whether you're on the JV team or on the varsity team, your wrestling match is just as important to, as a wrestler, as a JV, as you are as a varsity, right? right. Yep. And he's trying just as hard, and he's working to his potential, potential and he's hoping to get up, but uh, they're just as interesting to watch. Oh, yeah. They sometimes are a little bit more uh, uh, energetic, maybe even, as a JV, huh? Oh, <laughs> a lot of times I find that... Uh, that uh, when we're wrestling matches, I find that the JV matches are sometimes more interesting because the kids that are wrestling out there, all of a sudden they're just rolling around. Yeah. You know, and there, there's not really a whole lot of control. They're trying different things, and everything's you know they're letting everything go. We're not here for a wrestling uh, show, <laughs> however, however, uh, we 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 missed because Calvin mentioned who this man was. And, why don't you let you know that uh, he is your JV wrestling coach if you're from the western part of the town of Morris. And uh, nice talking with you. Phelan, uh, what about the tractors and the other case things? You talked a little bit about those with us also here? Or well, are you work on those? Not as much as I used to. Okay, well then listen. <laughs> I'm thank, mainly a machinery man. Okay, <laughs> thank you very much for your time and for your excellent, uh, I'm sure we got more out of this than we would have got from the exec because he don't get into what you just did I'm sure he tells you all the good things but you're showing us how it works and so forth and for your comments about your wrestling too thank you yeah, you, you were hesitating about even talking with us <laughs> for crying out loud Phelan Miner uh, from Shazy Lake originally you still live in Shazy Lake? oh yeah yep. uh -huh. you didn't leave up there at all no can't leave God's country <laughs> right you're watching Hometown Cable we're at Dragoon's Farm Equipment for their 40th anniversary day and that's why all these people are smiling. This guy was even born when, when his father started this business. No. Right? You're right. <laughs> I don't remember whether we got in to see you last year or not. I guess we did for a short time at least. Oh, yes, you did. Mrs. Sample. And first name? Scarlet. Scarlet Sample. Mrs. Bruce Sample. Right. Have we seen Bruce today yet? Have you been in? Yes, he has. Good. Well, those pancakes were good. Did you have yours so far? Yes, I did. Good. Great, aren't they? Good. Yeah. Yep. All right. Uh, from people who've seen it before, you work. You are the office manager. That would that be? You're no, in charge I, of the office. <laughs> I work. I work in the office. Right. You've been here for 13, 14 years. I think you told me. Twenty. Twenty years here. So that <laughs> you're a fixture here. You've been here half of the time that the business has been here. Just like 40 years today. You know, 40, yeah, 40th I guess anniversary. So that. <laughs> okay. Everything on computer now for uh, much, all your yeah. records. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Robin is helping you now. Robin, Robin right. Hemingway. And also uh, Miss uh, Jennifer. Dragoon, Jennifer. Right. Okay. Any other employees? No, that's it for in here. How has your business, as far as your part of the of the business, changed in the last four or five years? I imagine it's because of computers. Right, right. It's Is that in the last four or five years? Uh, well, we were on terminal before that, so we've been on like a, a t computer system since 1980, but in house since '85. Are you tied in with any other? Can you? reach the main office or anything like that, a case or without going through it. Do you have a modem? Yeah. So you can get information mm -hmm. downloaded and so forth all around. Yeah. We can get information on our equipment. All right. Well, uh, I don't know, are all your bills computer generated you send to your yes. customers and everything else? Yes, yeah. we do that. Yeah, we do that once a month. Can you tell me, if I asked you uh, who has bought a tractor from Dragoons the past eight or ten years, can you push a button and get a list of them? Uh, 
certain models like can. You right can. now we haven't updated our system to do what but that, 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 that part. But that, that is potential can be it done. It is, yeah. yes, yes. That's one of our projects we haven't quite got finished yet. Okay. Well, then, let me see, where can we go here? I'm, uh, uh, I, I'm not going to ask you about the business because that's, I've talked to the salesman, I've talked to the representatives, and I've, uh, we know about your computers. What, what is, what's happened new in the past year that you can tell me about, Scarlett? What's happened new? Not really a whole lot. No, no big changes? No, no big changes. Well, all right, let's see. Did, did the past weekend, did you get down to NCCS and see the, uh, the musical? Yes, I did. You, what night did you go? Friday night. Did you like that? Yes, it was very Great, nice. wasn't it? Yes, Great. All nice. right, we've yeah. talked about the musical now. We've, yeah. We're into everything possible. Calvin, you get me going here with Scarlett. What, what can I ask her here in the, in the office? <laughs> it, on computers now, I mean, she can't even show me anything that's on the scale, on the screen. No, not really. I mean, uh, I'm not going to ask her for accounts receivables or slow or anything like that. Ask her why her son brought my son out in the lake. Okay, <laughs> there. Oh, did you? Did you go to the party, by the way? Were you there? <laughs> yes, at his, I was. At his party? Yeah. Did you hear what Jack said? This guy <laughs> could yell. He said that at the party, right? Tell us about that. Give us your interpretation of that. Well, let's see. My son and his son went for a ride in a paddle boat. And all of a sudden, it came and panicked. <laughs> <laughs> he panicked. Would you say that would be a good yeah, description of that? Yeah, yeah, he was kind of... Tell that kids to get in here real quick. <laughs> I said, what's the matter, Calvin? He says, they're out too far. <laughs> well, I guess the water wasn't too deep there. Is that the idea? You know no, that. You know that. that huh? you know Just that. a little more knee high. <laughs> Calvin didn't know that, though. He didn't know that. No. At the time. He's a good, he'd be a good father. Huh? Protective father, yes. <laughs> at the party, I, I was been on TV. Uh, uh -huh. uh, Sam recorded that one. Jack said that he didn't know Calvin got excited like that. <laughs> It's pick on time, Calvin. <laughs> Anything else like that, Calvin? You want to find out about yourself? <laughs> That's it. Okay. Well, Scarlett, I guess I'm. Uh, I, I don't get out of questions very often here, but I'm, who is this young man? That's Wayne's boy. Well, come over That's here. Scar Talk to you. Come over here with Scarlett and I here. Yeah. Okay. Which boy is this? Watch, watch my card watch here. It. Here we go. What's 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 your name? Mark. Mark, did you come in and see? Who is this? The other one. Come on no, over here. Danny. Huh? This is. That's Danny. Danny, hi. Did we talk to you last year, didn't we? We were over there when you were drawing numbers last year. You drew the winners, remember? We saw you last year? Yeah. Okay. So, do you see Scarlett in here very often? Um, Would you come in the office? You get over here very often? You come in every other weekend. Yeah. yeah. Does she ever have any candy bars or gum or like that in her office? Nope. She doesn't. Wouldn't it be nice if she had some once in a while? Yeah. Maybe I'm going to remind her, maybe if she had a candy bar or something, you might even come in more often, right? Come yeah. in here and see her. Look at, look at, now, look, oh, see, I yeah. shaved her into giving you they, gum. Look at that. They just sit now. Hey, where have you been? Uh, did you go to school today? Did you go to school here in Mowers? What grade? Kindergarten. Kindergarten, eh? Second grade. Second grade. Well, who's your teacher? Mrs. Morelli. Mrs. Morelli. No. What's, what's her first name? Oh. Diane is here. Oh, Diane is. And your teacher? Mrs. Bourgeois. Mrs. Bourgeois. Okay. And uh, you in a hurry that you can get over here and drive these tractors and start working with your dad and your grandfather? Would you like to come over here and see your grandpa? Huh? Oh, grandma's over. Did you have any pancakes yet? No. Are you going to go get some? Yep. Yeah. They're great. And the sausage is good. And guess what? All the soft drink you want. You just pull a little handle and it comes right out. No money, nothing. That good? Okay. Anything else you want? Would you like to tell me? What's the best part about coming over here at the office? Um, Where's she, Dad? She see Dad, of course. Yeah, that, he's going to get some points. He, he said that. You can say that's the that's the best. But what's the second best? Um. Candy from Grandpa? Oh, getting candy from Grandpa, yeah. Grandpa's got your pictures in, on his wall in the office, right? Yeah, Grandpa good to you? Yeah. Yeah, you betcha. <laughs> and Grandma's even better, huh? Grandma good too, yeah, they're great. Hey, you can do anything you want with Grandma and Grandpa, huh? Mm -hmm. You never do anything wrong with them, correct? They never say it's wrong. That's what they've ever been in a commercial. Have you ever been in a commercial? Yes. On TV? Yeah. I saw you. I bet you each. You are all driving a tractor. Yes. Yeah. Did you drive one by yourself? How many times did you have to do it to get it right? Um, first time. First time. 
first time? Mm -hmm. Who stopped the tractor for you? Dad. <laughs> he ran behind and pulled the brake? Can you, do you know where the brake is? Yeah. yeah. First thing you want to learn on is where to brake, correct? Because if you don't stop, you keep right on going down in the river. Uh, and a cub cadet in the water is no good at all. Right? Yeah. You like being on TV like this? Yeah? Well, what would you like to tell me if I could say tell anything you want? What would you tell me? Who are you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what did you get for Christmas last year? Tell me that. You remember? Nintendo. Everybody said they liked Nintendo. Last year you told me Nintendo. Nintendo. You have a Nintendo? I didn't get it for Christmas. You then. didn't get a Nintendo? You had it before? Well, you had it early. When's your birthday? Don't know. I know it. You, you know your birthday or his? His and mine. Okay, tell me both. Um, mine is April 14th, born 1985. His, his is December 6th. Born 1986. Is that right? Is right? Huh? What's the best part about having a birthday? Presents. That's what I liked about it. Oh, you like to get the presents? Do you like presents? Yeah. Yeah? What's the best thing you would like if I could say, anything you want, I'll give you. What would you like best? Get married. Nope. Nope. <laughs> what, what would it be? 190. $2,200. What would you do at $2,200? Buy it. Buy what? Honda 90. Oh, a Honda 90. Do you, you ever ride a, you ever ride a, at a motorcycle or a, or a, a, a ski -doo? What is that? What's, what's a Honda 90? Um, a Honda. Is that a, is that a motorcycle? Four-wheeler. A four-wheeler? Oh, it's a four-wheeler. You gonna need? Two-wheel drive. Two-wheel drive, yeah. You like to have one of those? Yeah. Would you you go too fast? You'd wreck it up, wouldn't you? No, you wouldn't drive it too fast. Yeah. What would you buy if you could? You don't get a Honda ninety because he's got one. You can use his, so you get something different, right? You got bicycles. Yeah. I, but I didn't give. I didn't give for Christmas though. You gonna get one for Christmas? I didn't get. One you didn't get one for. Hey, what? My God! What did you get for Christmas? You didn't get a. You didn't get a Nintendo and you didn't get a bicycle? What did you get? You know what I got one year? A bag of garbage. And that wasn't any fun at all. That's the worst thing you can get for Christmas, is a bag of garbage. So don't ever ask for that, okay? Thank you for talking with us. Say hello, Calvin. That's Calvin over there. That's Mr. Castine. And he's got taking your picture. You're going to be on TV on Easter Sunday. There'll be the Easter Bunny and both of you. Okay? Thanks. Is that who's the guy behind us? Wayne Dragon. Yeah, do you know him? Yeah. That dad? Yeah. Oh, that's dad. I didn't know that. You did say I thought his name was Scott. That's not Scott. That's Wayne? Okay. Hi, Dad.